Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the Morning Madness Podcast. I'm your host, Victory, and I'm here today joined by our co-hosts, Carlos and TJ, once again. And we're here for our final episode of the Morning Madness Podcast, our 12-episode miniseries it turned out to be. Man, to think it's been over a year... <laughs> And so much has gone on, so much so so much has happened. We've watched so many games, movies, you know, events come, go, die, fail. We've watched a whole pandemic like come to an end and our summer's finally rolling in and uh, I'm getting ready to pack up and move like pretty soon. So like after this, after I leave the studio today, I might like <laughs> I might not see you guys again unless I bump into you like on purpose. <laughs> Which is crazy. Unless I come back next semester, obviously. But you know. That's all up in the air, but what about you guys? Uh, fucking shit, I'm just working this summer. That's yeah. all I'm doing, that's all I'm doing. Because yeah, you guys are both almost done, huh? Yeah, that more scares year. me. <laughs> one more <laughs> goddamn year. Yeah, I'll be going home, doing some work, and just honestly just kind of recouping. This this year is taking a lot out of me. Mm-hmm. I can, jeez, I hadn't yet known me too. I'm about to start upping my work workload, so I'll be working a full time for the first time. I'm not happy about that at all. <laughs> I'm terrified compared to what, like, if if what I've already been doing is a lot to me, yeah. I can only imagine what it'd be like to take on a full thing plus 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 content. So like, I have to do like a nighttime job to stream during the day, or like work and upload during the day. So it's like, it's a weird thing to fit, but it's like a you do what you can to like try to to optimize the the amount of time to make stuff. So it's like it, it it'll be interesting. Uh, hopefully, I don't burn myself out, which is something I've been deathly afraid afraid of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel that. Um, fuck. A lot of. So I guess we can jump right into what's been going on in the pop culture news t today, since we don't want to. We'll 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 slow. We'll just jump around. Let let it feel real light and natural, guys. I've been uh, bombarded with nothing, but like I feel like my entire social media feed, besides like any game or mo movie announcements, has literally just been the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial, <laughs> um, which is I think what's still going on today. Yeah, but I think they're on like day what ten, eleven. It's gonna go on for a while. You think it's gonna go on for a while? I think so. I mean, if this isn't one of the biggest. Not it's stunts, but biggest spikes in publicity for both of them for the for a long while, like they're gonna stretch this shit out. Nah, it, nah, mm. no, dude, they're so like they're just on the cusp of like just, just dude, just get it over with, mm. you know, for what it's for, you know, hearsay, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I was uh, when I saw you the other day, I was, I was talking about it. this means so much more to you than it does to me to oh, see all these what's people. What's called? Homie was playing Ace Phoenix. It was did not get past the tutorial, you know. <laughs> Well, like, like hearsay, hearsay, hearsay. Yeah, no. From I a just, from a normal person's standpoint, it, it seems like a lot. Everybody was trying to like. It seems like this guy was really trying to cobble together what he could. Oh no! Um, with the, like, to be to be fair, this dude was fucked from the, from the very beginning. Yeah. Like this dude just <laughs> got paid to defend a defenseless kick, defend our defenseless case and whatnot. It's just dude. amazing to me how they can. I mean, how they have stretched it out so far. Like. There's such clear evidence against her, and yeah. it's like, what, what, how much more do you need to provide, like, in her defense? Like, I understand that, like, due process and all that shit, but come on, man, like, just get it over with. I think the, 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 the stunts around the, the case have been more fun than the case itself, like, the entire time. It's literally yeah. the, the lawyer, and then, like, um, I, I've, been seeing, I've been seeing, like, TikToks talking about how Amber Heard's been wearing, like, outfits to match Johnny Depp every day when they go into the... Into the courtroom, I haven't or she'll wear like an outfit that matches what he wore the day before, or something like that. It's like a, as like a psychological warfare thing. I'm trying to, uh, well, I'm not too familiar with the uh, details of the case, but I'm pretty sure the biggest thing that's been hard to defend Amber on, like Amber's behalf of this trial, is that she shat in a grown <laughs> man's yeah. bed. There's no other way to really get around to it. Yeah. No? Like, that's, yeah. it's like all the, the memes big, and that's, shit. yeah that's the big thing that came out of it is like why aren't you what's like why aren't you defending me you know what's like why aren't you defending me that's what i hired you for you shat in this man's bed amber <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's like there's it, it is a bit it does take up a, a, a serious couple steps to get to that point but no, no she took a leap of faith <laughs> <laughs> what's this called? It, it, uh, she jumped through communication and like all through uh, all those other steps and shit and just immediately went to like shit and all this 
<laughs> well, I mean, I have never been in a situation <laughs> where I have been alone with somebody's bedroom for long enough to, th to, to do horrible things to them. But if you want to ruin someone's day, it is a terrible way to... But, but the thing is, the problem with me to me is that she shared the bed with him at the time, I'm pretty sure. Like, she still slept in that bed with him. I mean, like, uh, she had her own place, you know. Yeah. I got you. Okay. She could have, you know, take a shit, like, you know, dump and, like, dip sort of situation. I don't know. Well, I mean, like, it's hard. To, it's, there it's are weird. more inconvenient places. I mean, I feel like, like we all joke about, like, taking a dump in, like, you know, like someone's bed and shit, but for her to actually do it, and I'm like, that's, yeah, that's, man, that's wild. That's that's fucked up. There are very few people I could see are reserved for the for the who deserve that treatment, like that that punishment. But I could never imagine doing it myself. It's like it like it would take a certain level of snapping in my brain to the point where I get to that. But that that's just because like I view that as such an absurd absurdist non human thing. I'm trying to figure out like how, what would you do like after like the fact you know what I mean. You just. You just walk away, and you you have to go. You have to go. Like, wipe, I imagine like, you have to go drink situation. heavily to forget about it. Yeah, afterwards. like bring toilet paper with you. Yeah, like is someone like being told? Did she bring toilet paper in? With her no, you shit? guys are heavily overthinking this. He clearly has sheets <laughs> on the bed. <laughs> oh my just god, she just. Marks. I really don't think she would care by that point. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. yeah. I also don't want to dwell. She I've noticed honestly, all week, all week, every podcast that has talked about this has then gone on for 20 minutes to talk about shitting on beds <laughs> or, like, some sort followed. of shit-related topic. Like you just said, it's like, it takes a certain, like, person to, like, to, like, hop over all those other steps and shit, um, and then just immediately just jump into, like, just shitting on someone's She bed. definitely followed the Sigma grind set uh, morning <laughs> routine, which is step it's, one, wake up. Step two, take a shit. Step three, eat breakfast. And step four, get out of bed. Ah, uh, I did see that. Has everyone else just been Amber hurting her wrong this entire time? Oh my god. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but no, fuck her. Um, I wanted to ask you guys about, um, I guess let's segue into this uh, topic. Um, do you guys follow the Act Man at all on YouTube? The Act Man? Yeah. I would need a. I'd probably need more. It was. It's. There's this dude going around, um, or, or like a separate YouTube channel that's going around like false copywriting, claim like a bunch of people and shit. Okay, so I might Quant have heard about this. Yeah, the quantum, quantum TV is like the person's like YouTuber name and shit, and this dude's a fucking, this dude's a weirdo. So he's copywriting people for yeah. stuff that, uh, see, Cause interesting. Because he, he had a hot take on Elden, uh, on Elden Ring. That's, that's where this all fucking stems from. It's from a really bad Elden Ring take. Go ahead. Well, how did this How did this branch off into a whole full-blown so, copyright argument? Yeah. So this dude, Quantum TV, first of all, started... Um, he released a Elden, like a video on Elden Ring, like reviewing it and stuff. It's a horrible take. He's one of those people that's like, oh, Elden Ring or um, From Software Games in Easy Mode and shit. And I'm like... Well, you're already stupid for what you said just said and shit. <laughs> and proceeds to just this entire video, he just like paints himself into such a like, hard corner, and so like people are just flaming him for what hill stuff. does he die on? Just that it's not a good game. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's like it's, it's bad because it's hard. Yes, it's bad because it's hard, and like people gotcha. He feels that it's inaccessible, inaccessibility and difficulty are the same thing, when they're not. No, no, because no, I, I don't think I've ever played a game on non-hard mode since I've gotten to the point where I've say I'm... Like, if, the moment you realize, okay, I'm good at video games, you don't really ever... You don't really ever go, okay, I'll start it easy. Yeah. You go, I, I'll start it hard, bring it down to normal if it's bad. Like, that's just the way... That's what it's about. It's the challenge is the point of playing video games in the first place. Yeah. And in we, every genre. <laughs> yeah. And especially, like, I think... I feel like... I. I feel like we've uh, talked this before. I've talked about this before. Um, like when it comes to from software games, are completely different. There's the reason why they're in the league of their own. By his stuff. by his logic, does that mean Candy Crush is a bad game? Dude, when you get to certain levels, because I, it's. I tell you this, it only gets more and more <laughs> like the fuck the so fuckery then, that that like goes with, that goes on. So like, then does he go to go on to copyright commentary YouTubers who talk about his uh -huh. channel? Okay, uh -huh. so, so I think I have on. seen, like, he's suing for defamation? Yeah, and so, and apparently, so the guy that um, has been covering this act, man, he has about, uh, like, a, like, millions of subscribers. I think, like, 
one point seven. I might be doing this wrong or his statistics, but he have a he has a lot of subscribers though too. Okay. He made a whole entire video about you know copyright claim and like basically like replying to this dude and what he's been doing and calling him out on this bullshit. The Quantum TV guy then apparent um then got in contact with the Ackman's mom and threatened to detox them and DM'd him like, hey, we don't want people like you know getting hurt and shit and like. Ackman on Twitter is like, this is what Quantum TV just sent me. It's like, I'm going to shoot you on site now sort of shit. <laughs> Jeez. And this Quantum TV dude is like a hard right leaning. Gotcha. So it's like, we're just, that's weird. See, I don't see many like YouTube dramas extend to the point of like physical threats anymore. Oh, no. Just, like, this dude is like. Like physical, like actual life threats anymore. Right? Yeah, this dude is just a horrible freaking person and shit. He said a lot of fucked up shit about um, the LGBTQ uh, community, though, too. Gotcha. So there, yeah. there are a lot of platform, like people on their platform that are like, you just, you watch people slowly do commit career suicide over time. As I, th <laughs> I think this person just, I don't I don't know where he was going with his YouTube and stuff. He's he was like at forty thousand. He's at like forty thousand and whatnot though mm -hmm. too. Um, but like it's he definitely wasn't wasn't going to make a career out of this and definitely isn't like going to now <laughs> because like so many people are on this dude's ass. Jeez, it uh, you it's never a good. I guess to be fair, shock or like the negative. Uh, the it is it is very easy to generate views on YouTube by going, ooh, this is this is fun. Like people like this. I'm gonna go. I don't like this. Is why most film critic like like or like a uh, movie commentaries are the most popular ones. Are always the like insert great movie here sucks and here's why and it's like yeah it's like it's it's a really like that that view value is great but you're immediately alienating everybody who comes in and watches your videos because they by not agreeing with you yeah. even if they're subscribed to you they they now have that immediate like that that in, innate thought that you guys don't agree on things. And it's just going to make things harder to begin with. Yeah. It's like a Dark Viper, the speedrunner, who's constantly gets himself into shit. So he's like, he's so he can't ever let himself grow comfortably. Yeah. I think you guys are just going to have to watch the Ackman videos that he covers everything. And uh, it's just, it gets just egregious. As soon as you think it gets worse, it gets even more worse. <laughs> From this whole situation. Jeez. YouTube's had a lot of copyright related shit going on lately. Yeah. Um, the, what company is smacking down on them right now with I mean, a lawsuit? Nintendo's always been a fucking um, bitch about it. There was a recent issue going on about false copyright claims with Bungie. Uh, and Bungie cr uh, decided to crack down and uh, you know take legal action against YouTube for getting some of the creator content pulled. Stuff yeah, that's been Bungie. vaulted from previous stuff. So Bungie's really gripping YouTube a new one real quick. And YouTube doesn't really ever stand up for itself they kind of back down to big company but maybe this will this will be good for copyright because uh well they kind of bungie has been like the the community creators like best friend when it comes to gaming companies like they love yeah. their creators um but it's different when like and it's weird because that stems from that video i was talking about that the quantum tv and whatnot and um, they explain like how um like copyright claims like go and stuff like that that it's like an illegal that it's like something that youtube has to like god i'm trying to think of the word that they have to address right then and there as soon as they claim it or else it becomes illegal or else it be, um, evolves into a legal situation mm -hmm. because youtube is a free use domain site um and they're protected under certain laws and shit but when they have dmca the um copyright claims and shit they have to address it immediately or else they lose some of those uh, protections that they have mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um but yeah it's fucking egregious that some people are using like the algorithm and shit to like get people like removed well yeah well like we and even before that we watched all the nintendo music get pulled down by nintendo as they were like you know, getting ready to set up their Nintendo music streaming library that hasn't even been announced yet. But we all know it's happening because yeah. that's the only way Nintendo does things is as soon as they pull down a fan project, you know they're about to make their own version. So, <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of sad that like there's not a like a, a level of security for fan creators, because last night, just last night, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. um, I know it was trending on Twitter for several hours. Uh Justice for SpongeBob on Twitter. What? The, uh, so there was a big fan, th uh, two year long fan work that completely reanimated, revoiced, and redid the SpongeBob SquarePants original movie in honor of Steven Hillenburg. It was a fan project called SpongeBob SquarePants: The Movie Rehydrated. Um, 
And it premiered last night on YouTube. After two long years of development and work as a big fan project with hundreds of people involved in it, as a big tribute to the creator of the show, as the show was premiering, or as the movie was premiering, about 15, 30 minutes in or however long it was, Viacom pulled the show for copyright. Really? Immediately. Even though it was, one, 100% transformative because completely reanimated, completely revoiced, and, like, disclaimed at the beginning that it is intended to be owned by them, right? Or, like, owned by the company, all the original rights to the original creators, all that. It is completely fair use and completely transformational. There is no reason Viacom should have pulled it down, and it was a hard bit of work that like is just lost to time now obviously they could re-upload it to daily motion or something and i'm sure it'll exist somewhere forever but just what they've done is essentially erase the only good chance they had of releasing that project to a wide audience yeah. and it's a big dick move I, I cannot imagine ruining someone's entire two-year-long fan project especially if it's something that you've been working on for so many for like you 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 don't sit down and decide i'm going to recreate this spongebob movie and <laughs> and, and like and you don't th think for a second that like oh man you know like the copyright issues you're like man they're going to be so excited like they, they what if they love this and hire us on you know like what if they see how good we are and they're like we can join the team you know oh, you're not yeah. thinking oh it's, they're going to rip your show down yeah. halfway through it's, its production it's never like or i would say the majority of the time it's like it flips to that side of the coin though too just because it's you know at the end of the day it's just Companies will come in and and flex how much power they got and shit and you know I ain't right, man. fuck I ain't your two right. years of work, dog. Like I'm ter I hate the, I I'm scared of the idea that any company can come and just copyright your stuff. But I don't make stuff that's like really copyright infringing. Like I get like like music yeah. that's <laughs> that'll do, get like strikes and stuff. I have plenty of those. But um, it's it's scary because like every time you see some big like shit like this happening, it makes you w worried. Like when there was the big AdSense dip. Uh, you get worried that like the platform might not be stable and the platform might disappear, and it's like I'm like I'm really hedging my bets and banking on being here forever. So it's like, it's uh, it's scary to watch the platform kind of be like taken over by or like them abuse a system that's been in place for a little while now. Yeah, and like obviously YouTube will change the system, which means the whole platform essentially is about to yeah. change again. But I mean, you know, as long as like people are like you know shining light on the subject and making sure like you know just shitty people get fucking you know. Called out for their shit, and that's all you can hope for. Yeah, well, I mean, like, talking about <clears throat> calling people out for their shit, Nintendo's making a fucking emulation service for their Nintendo Switch Online to yeah. play old GBA games and stuff, and like DS yeah. games, stuff like that, right? Stuff that you can already emulate for free. Um, <laughs> I'm really upset about it. Like, I get it. They're, this they, They've always been against emulation, right? And, yeah. like, when tried to pull down ROMs, and everybody's like, well, if you want to pull it down, why don't you make your own? And they're like, well, fuck it, we're making our own now. But it's like, do I really want to pay for these ROMs yeah. again, like, I get it, that's the, like, the, I know the argument always has been, if you want to pay the game, pay the game, and it's like, if it's a hundred bucks, I, that's understandable, if it's like ten bucks to play every single GBA game I've ever played, I'll maybe cough it up just to play it on my Switch for the portability and comfortability yeah. of that, but it's like, if the emulators, the emulators I've had on my phone were always nicer because they were in, on my phone, it was never the fact that it was a handheld system, it was just, like, a you know, the PSP could have had a fucking GBA emulator for all I cared. It wouldn't have made much of a difference. Ah, uh, the PSP. I wonder if a uh, handheld gaming will ever... Well, I don't think it'll ever return. I think, I think it's it's slowly earning its, its, like, stance. Now that the Steam Deck is out and, like, the Switch, the Steam Deck have been out for a while, we're probably going to see another handheld come out pretty soon. Yeah, but between, like, phones and, like, the Switch and stuff like that, I don't, like... I don't think you can get any more convenient than I think those two. the Switch has taught us we're just going to, for portable, it looks like we're just going to get a bunch of, like, you know, the general, everybody can play games, like Fortnite and everything, like, all the games that can Fortnite. just barely be run by every small service, like, console. Um, any game that can make a mobile version of itself, essentially, will speaking, be big on handheld. Speaking of, uh, sp of games... Call of Duty just released their new title that they're releasing this oh. year. Oh, is the Modern Warfare Two finally gotten yep. getting? Re I mean, I mean, I guess they've already announced it. I guess but, yeah, everybody um, knew it was, it was what was next. But I guess the the reveal thing. I was, saw the uh, oh, did the reveal trailer come out? Not, not the reveal trailer, but okay. like the reveal. I don't even know what the fuck you would call that. Cause the reveal just, logo. Yeah, the yeah. Reveal logo. To be quite honest, M eleven two. M eleven two. You right. You right. Um, but I'm, I'm all, I will say this. I think this might be the one, like, 
I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to buy this one. We say this every year. <laughs> yes, but this one is different. <laughs> but it's <laughs> God damn it. We, we say, say that, that and too. not a single bit of footage has been released. It's it's so sad because I was sitting there like uh, obviously and we'll talk and obviously I'm going to swing into the next big thing that we can talk about, but um like Call of Duty has been the same thing every year, and I don't know. I bought it three years in a row, the last three years, and I've been telling myself I was done buying it for the last two years. And it, I don't, I, I don't know how I've managed to try to convince myself, like maybe just as like a supplemental game, maybe you know, just cause, just because Warzone's still popular, maybe just because you know Warzone it's fucking is terrible right it's now. Unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Been fucking that Call terrible of Duty for a while. Is sucking so bad, and still not deciding to take it a year a year long break. Or I do have a rebuttal to that though. Mm. This is Modern Warfare 2, a sequel to Modern Warfare uh, 2019. And I think that makes the biggest difference. I don't. I didn't like Modern two. Warfare 2019 like that. Dog, what you bugging right now? It You're, does not. It it didn't really feel all that great to me. I, I didn't. I it wasn't yeah. special. It was dark gritty shooter game. It was dark gritty, gritty shooter. arcade shooter game. <laughs> if they that if the if the map lighting was better, maybe it wouldn't be a problem. I think the well, if you think about it. All the things that Call of Duty has been trying to do or has been doing within the last couple of years that's worked stem from that game. All of the most popular maps in Call of Duty, by the way, I've noticed, are very well-lit maps. And not a single well-lit map is in Modern Warfare 2019. <laughs> Every big popular, like, shipment is the closest thing you get, and that's because it's an upgrade of an old map. Like, when it Which comes shipment to, map? Uh, not shipment, uh, shipyard or whatever, the, what, the small close quarters map. That's in Modern Warfare 2019. I'll oh, yeah, this yeah, one. yeah. Wait, do you mean the shooting range, the shooting range one or? Uh, the one where it's like very close quarters. Yeah, yeah. The shooting range one. But it's like well lit, you know? It's like all the dark maps are not the ones people like playing on. I got to Because the newer CODs have terrible visuals. Yeah, but like I'm, when I tell you that everything from that game was like made, that was what made, um, God damn, I'm trying to fucking find the words. That game is praised for a reason. It's been it's been the best Call of Duty um, since freaking this um, last couple. And the, the fact that this is a sequel, though, too, I'm pretty optimistic for this one. One thing I have to say, though, is that the bar is pretty low for Call of Duty right now. So, yeah, like, can... I, I just feel like, in general, as a franchise, they can do no right. Like, they've... They... They had their time, and Call of Duty's just at the point that whatever they do just isn't going to be new. It's not going to be exciting. And, like, I remember even back in, like, 15, 16, when it was exciting, like, which title was going to be next. And now it's, like, it's kind of, like, it's, uh, whatever. Yeah, because it wasn't, like, they weren't just absorbed by fucking, like, just sales and shit. I really do yeah. think, like, the introduction of, like, fucking battle passes and shit has been... Battle cool. passes did fuck things a yeah. lot. Like, all, it, like, they, they've had time to, like come up with a new game and the best they got is a remake of modern warfare 2 so i'm like a remake of one of already the greatest games of all time yeah so like e say what you will about advanced warfare infinite warfare at least they were trying new shit like yeah, they were like exactly. that's what i was ideas. just about to say it's like what what why doesn't somebody who's the they need a guy to walk in slam the table and go fuck it give samurai's guns that's our job this game like we're doing fucking Sheng, we're doing we're doing fucking like old school samurai era, but they have guns. That that's our Call of Duty this year. They, they, <laughs> remember remember when what was that? They made a side scrolling game or for uh for not a side scrolling game, but like a or sorry, there was a Chinese Call of Duty game, uh, service live service CS:GO style game that was out for a while called Call of Duty Online. I don't know if it was ever officially attached to the so the product or not. I'm not familiar. But um, that one was like a CS:GO ish thing. But it, like it was still even then, like the lore to that was very focused and focused. I'm tired of World War games. We we yeah. have fought this World War more than our ancestors have at this point. <laughs> 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 I, I like it, it's, I've seen every possible outcome of World War Two. Like by now, yeah. Like, it it is unbelievable how many times they've milked this game. They really have milked that era it, really it, hard. Like the Cold War has become one of the most profitable eras ever, and it's and the Cold War was fucking thirty years ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I just feel like Call of Duty. They can't really do anything right now to get me excited. At least mm -mm. sequels. Sequels are hard. Obviously, like it, it is difficult to make a game that's like that is so that is still the same game as your last game, and but not but still different enough to be. To bring to 
please the people who are getting tired of it. Mm-hmm. Like Overwatch Two has been like the beta has been proving that like ha- like a hundred percent. I don't like, know. I don't know. I've been watching the less- beta, and the only things that have like somewhat excited me are Orisa's rework mm-hmm. and um, Sojourn, but. It literally... It's the same game. It, it, it just looks exact. like the same game, and, and that's one thing All I feel like... All the way like down to the, the matchmaking and the lobbies, like, everybody will comment on, in the games, like, yeah, Overwatch 2 is Overwatch 1. Like, Overwatch 2, like, shit, like, I think the comment I got yesterday was, Overwatch 1 took an hour for a good game. Overwatch 2, still not a good game yet. Yeah. <laughs> it literally, like, it just feels like they just did a UI overhaul in Overwatch 1, <clears throat> and and what makes me... So here's the thing. Every great sequel that brings back the same like characters, right, is going to revamp everyone in a certain way. Street Fighter. They have chosen, you know, Mortal Kombat. Every single game that comes after it, you know, there's you have the same characters. Yeah. But they look different. They do different things. They sound different. They have different move sets and abilities. Overwatch is hard to do that with because you just have such a balanced system that has become cemented, you know, in the player base that you can only select a few characters to change and rework. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. the like okay, you have characters like Widowmaker and Soldier 76 that they did, do did exactly the same thing. <laughs> but Bastion's like a completely different hero. Bastion's completely different. Sombra's completely different. And it's like they're picking and choosing characters that were problematic in the first one mm-hmm. and changing them in this one because they don't want to do it for the first one. I and like, I'm like Bastion now. He's, Bastion, he's like he's a guy. Bastion's rework actually <laughs> is pretty good. Fuck that game. He's a dude. Like he actually like he's actually like he's a, a pro- dude. Like like <laughs> like you could play him and be like, I'm not toxic today. Like yeah. <laughs> Um the one thing that is kind of cool is the sound design is completely changed for the game. Mm-hmm. So they've actually recorded like Soldier's Gun now is it actually like sounds like a real rifle and it's actually kind of cool. And so it makes the game the gameplay for Overwatch Two that I've seen is a lot more of that fast pace that they mm-hmm. were going for for the first one. But I just feel like yeah, now to be quite honest, it's even easier and more faster with steamroll now oh yeah sometimes the game can uh, fly sometimes I especially with this new robot map uh or like the new robot game mode which i love i really like it that, i think it's, it looks fun it looks like it could be one of the most fun to watch esports wise because yeah. it's like we watching the robot slowly make its way because you can push it all the way to just about their point yeah. and then they have to make it past that end on their side to get the win even if the time runs out and they're still pushing it or like obviously I think if they stop pushing it that's when it ends but they have to get past that to win it it's yeah. like the per- it's like it's like arm wrestling almost it is overwatch arm wrestling essentially yeah. it's it's pretty fun i think that their focus um like the competitive sense like the multiplayer is not going to be their big selling point no. they want just they want this game to they like, need to make quick play worth worthwhile now they need incentives to make you come and play the game. Yeah, otherwise, and I, don't, and I don't think that it's going to be their multiplayer that gets it. I think it's going to be the PVE. That the PVE is exactly what I'm excited for. Yeah. I'm that's what I'm. That's what I'm probably going to get. That's going to be the determining factor. That being said, Sojourn, the hero on on their own, is fucking phenomenal. I had she's so much broken. fun playing her. She's like, actually broken. Like, I was her broken slide and shit was that like was, I, I uploaded a video for that on Friday where I was showing off like the the pot shots you could pull off by sliding from cover mm-hmm. to cover is just un. Unbelievable! Like the mobility you have as Sojourn is fucking insane. I, f- I feel like the game, that PvP be, yeah. wise, is they're, they're truly designing it for Overwatch League, which bothers me because this is yeah. not going to be a consumer friendly multiplayer. Mm-hmm. I think Blizzard's no. all about just that is their esports game. Like World of Warcraft is their community yeah. game. Like yeah, it's it's and it's really just concerning me because it's like. Yeah, pros are going to have a good time with this game. They already are because th- those are also like 80% of the people who got into the beta because it was randomized. And I'm like, I got my dog b- shit, it's I randomized. Don't know. Did, did, I thought we all clicked the link to get into the beta, right? And then they switched it on us? It was always an opt-in. Like, it was always going to be a random lottery, and they would roll it out week by week. But like... Because I, I, I got my beta code day one, first hour. And I thought it had something to do with because I got it on my esports account. I didn't get it on my on my personal. So uh, yeah, I opted in on every single one of my accounts, and I haven't gotten a code yet. 
Interesting. I got my, I got mine through uh, like barely re- reaching like super's like four hour mark and shit. And, and see, I, I didn't have time to do them. See, I didn't watch stream. any streamer for it. That was my thing. I, I was really you. upset with the uh, see when Valorant did that on Twitch and did the drops. That was very well done. That was how you do it right. Overwatch made the mistake of using a supported streamer section, which means if you're gonna if if especially on opening fucking day for your game. It's no small streamer is going to stream Overwatch 2 when there's a supported streamers section for the drops that day. It's like, at least with Valorant, everybody had drops, right? Like, even the people who didn't think they had drops would still had drops enabled listed on their in their title, yeah. right? Um, and then people would still get games from it because Valorant would just give it to the people who were watching Valorant. Whereas Overwatch were like, you have to be watching these specific 10 people or like these yeah. specific pros. And it's like, I get it. They deserve it. Like they've been supporting your game or whatever. But it's like, I was I was talking about streaming day one and I didn't think I was going to get a code. Like I didn't expect, I, had, I, had, I was out at a restaurant at the time I got the code. I was, yeah. I, like I was supposed to stream that day, but I was like, I'll just take the day. I was like, there's no way in hell I'm, I'm going to get the code. And even if I do, nobody's going to watch, right? And then I ended up streaming that day. I think Isaac streamed, like, right after I did, too. So it was like... Yeah, I'm probably... Like, I, I'm not really counting on getting a beta code. So, like, I'm just going to watch while I can. But I don't know. Just nothing about the PvP has really excited me for that reason. Because all the characters that I've liked to play... Yeah, they're the all same. The char- they're exactly. exactly the same, minus a few changes. Like, Roadhog is dog shit. Because you know they've <laughs> they've practically removed the reliance on the shields in the game, and they've nullified CC. Mm-hmm. But Hog is so. still a punching bag. Like it doesn't like he's worse in Overwatch Two than he ever was in Overwatch One. And I just I don't understand. And also every character, well no sorry, certain characters have new looks except for they don't. <laughs> yeah, except for they don't. It's just their icons. Yeah. Like, especially for, if you have a skin too, like you can't see a single fucking difference. Yeah, like Roadhog, Diva, Zarya, like they all look the same. Like I don't understand why they would say like, "Oh, every character is gonna have a new look." I'm like, sure they'll do oh, like the visual overhauls once the real game comes. Probably. Out, like, I kind of want to see a little bit of what they have for the visual overhaul because I it it I I understand like the moment I saw that it was you just flick the server on the Overwatch game thing to get to Overwatch Two, I knew it wasn't gonna be too much different. Mm-hmm. But it was like I felt like when I when I logged in, the first thing you're greeted with is like the new screen and everything. Yeah. It feels like a new game. Like it feels so nice and so satisfying. And then you're greeted with the screen and the new tracer, right? And you're like, yeah. she looks so cool. And then you go to the sc- the heroes menu, and you're like, oh, shit, look at like Soldier's got a beard. So does Reinhardt. Look at it. And then you go to look at the skins, and it's like, well, they just they're the exact same yeah. models from the old game. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I feel like. And it, and it also worries me because I, I know that, like, at, at this point, Overwatch 1 is done. Mm-hmm. Like, they're not going to put anything yeah. more into that game. But, like, I mean, we got to we got to run it into the ground, which is something, like, we got to we got, we got got to be the last esports, like, yeah. uh, year season before the game got, like, got put to rest. Now it's time to go play Animal Crossing now. We're a competitive yeah. Animal Crossing yes, team sir. now, boys. Among Us. <laughs> competitive <laughs> Among Us. Competitive Among Us VR when it comes out? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know. It's been interesting to see, and it's exciting. You know, it's good to see the community back. But I'm like, very happy to have another game to maybe save it. But like, I, you know, like yeah, I, I don't think it'll like save it. I think it's just going to bring in a new wave of players. That's, yeah. that's the best. And it's it's right. going to keep these the Overwatch League alive. Really that being said, Quick Play they, still has levers all the time. I really yeah. hope that uh fucking the eight, the PVs like. It is what it is. That's what I want. Like, and that's what I've. That's what I did want from Overwatch Two. I didn't want more PvP bullshit. I just wanted an actual story mode because mm-hmm. that's what they promised us at BlizzCon when Jeff was in charge. But then once Jeff left, they were like esports. <laughs> yeah, I was talking with my mom Jeff. yesterday. She texted me asking a little bit to learn about esports, and I was telling her I was, I was like, yeah, right now in the college area, like things are obviously like there's not enough games out right now to get funding for the schools, or like it's not. I guess it's the not that esports is not a supported industry. It's just that there's not enough games right now to really make colleges feel like they can make that push. Mm-hmm. And in the same way, on the pro level, I've been hearing that the, like the uh, the esports arena at the Luxor in Vegas has been empty pretty often because there's just no games to really entice people to try to get into esports right now. There's nobody who could think they can go pro because there's no games to go pro in anymore. There's the top like if you're not a Smash League, Call of Duty, or Rocket League player. 
then you don't have many tournaments that are coming up constantly. Mm -hmm. And it's like we need new esports contenders games. Like we we need we need more opportunities to throw some more people in because I I would love to make a, another attempt to run for the pro circuit one more time. Like I think it's just kind even of, if it is in basket weaving VR. Basket weaving VR. I think it's just kind of. It's just kind of hard to, like, make an eSport out of something just in general, though, too. I know that, like, people make the most weird games out of eSports and have shit. You, have you, by chance, seen any, like, video of people playing Onward competitively? Like, competitive v uh, Onward I have VR? never heard of it. So, Onward. it's, like, a it's a Milsim, like, uh, 5v5. So, it's a very tactical thing. But, like, you're given, like, a 6x6 six six area. And, like, the arenas, instead of, like, you know how, like, in normal traditional eSports arenas, it's, like, the people sat at their desks 5x5 five five on yeah. each side. So instead, it's five platforms on each side with like the f like lights around them, giving them enough room to move their body. And so essentially, you get to watch these five people stood there in their headsets and they're like f tracking uh, while they're like. And so you'll see the like some dude prone, crouching, crawling in his little section to try to get a little pot shot at some dude's foot. And it's like it's the next evolution of of e of esports. I would love to try my hand at like uh, onward esports, except I don't like onward. Um, uh, there is a VR shooter coming out that will be the VR esport. You mark my fucking words, and I'm gonna be there when it gets there. Veil vale VR will be out in uh, within the next year. So. I mean, if people are just that dedicated to doing all that inside a video game, why not just go do that like a paintball like? Well, because yeah. it's not. Because it's like you don't. Nobody. Nobody gets as excited about it for paintball. There's no prize pool that big for paintball. You know, like, there's something to the the gaming aspect of it that makes it fun too. I mean, if you it's like all the extra movements and stuff. If, you're, if my thing is like, if you're gonna do that. Go do it somewhere where you can, like, you know, go shoot a paintball. Yeah. You ever shot well, a paintball yeah. at like, like someone's I mean, nutsack? That's, yeah. pretty, that's pretty satisfying, I think Doug. the sentiment... I think that's an esports, older mindset, though. The sentiment with esports right now and the absolute, like, state of it is just go outside, honestly. <laughs> Touch some grass. Like, like, it's funny because we had a period where esports was just so, like you know, aggressively taking over everything. And it was a community thing. It felt really positive for a while. And then now it's just, like, tiresome. Like, I feel like people are genuinely getting tired of it. Like, until the next big game comes out that, like, is actually community-based tournaments and stuff like that. Like, that's why Valorant was so big, but even the Valorant esports scene is dying down. You no, know, the only game that seems to be happy in esports is smash and that and with even smash then even League. then even then that's like everybody who doesn't play melee because melee is like where all the bad people are yeah. and yep. like everybody else is like we're having a great time because we have a cesspool for our <laughs> i think league is anywhere else in the world besides where we were at oh, league, league of legends be, like, fair. league would be like the game and shit that league for esports is still like actually here. It's only not big here in the states. Yeah. I I like it's it's one of those games that still sits on my computer and I still play it every now and then. It's just I don't understand Hell how no. you can I like I guess no. I I don't I'm not going to say I don't understand how you can because I totally understand how you can play it competitively. It's just the the graphical focus would be hard for my brain. My brain wouldn't be able to sit there and yeah. stare at a small character like that. I need a, I need like if I'm gonna play minutes. a MOBA, I need something like Smite where it's like you can see a large character to work with. See, I Smite, play. I have no problem like playing this stuff. I'll play Smite over League of Legends any time of the day. So so it's not the game mode that you guys have a problem with then. It's no, just yeah. I'm okay with MOBAs. I love MOBAs for some reason. They're like one of my top favorite game modes or like game t or genres. It's just. There's not many out. You guys remember when Epic Games before uh, Fortnite ever came out? They were working on what was supposed to be the biggest MOBA like ever, Paragon, mm -hmm. and then they decided yep. Fortnite was the way to go, and so they scrapped Paragon, threw their assets out for free, and now there's like three or four game companies trying to couple together their own MOBA with those characters. That That's they, wild. And see, and but. They like the three, like two of them come out in the next year, and we might see some. We might actually. See That's some the reason why I feel like it's just like. Anything past the Switch or like the or like mobile games and stuff like that, I just don't see what I just don't see any other company trying to like make a PSP or like a Nintendo DS. But like I've seen a lot of people like you know start oh, using you know, the Nintendo DSs now and shit. Out of all of a sudden, you don't think that the Xbox showcase they're gonna show off the Xbox Mini S X S Tiny Plat Pro Seven Twenty? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, I don't believe that. No, no, I, I feel like Microsoft's next step would just obviously be to make a handheld device, right? It's the only thing they don't have. I feel like any if I mean, any gaming company doesn't care about their employees and wants their company to fail, they'll make a the gaming mobile device right now. <laughs> 
I would you guys get a Steam Deck? You think? Like if you had the money, no. like, could you guys justify it at all? No, no. there's no reason. So you guys do like really? I, I don't. I don't game that much that I could at that I need to bring my Steam games with me. If anything, it's all like it's. There's a more reason to just to get the Switch. Uh, that's so. fair. If I, I'm, I'm on vacation. I'm. I'm not gonna game. I just know that. Like, yeah. I don't. I don't feel like. That's the thing. I feel like portable gaming, the Switch. The Switch is something that I would consider because it's just so versatile. You know, you yeah. can use it for a lot, and it, and it's very niche. Those are games that you can only like get on the Switch. I feel like the Steam Deck is something that it's like. These are games I have on my PC. I can play them whenever I want. If I'm out, I'm out. I do not care. That's fair, I guess. I guess maybe I'd get it if I traveled more. Is what is my thought process. Just like maybe if, if I won't, maybe w- it, I'll get one if I start traveling a lot. But I like uh, having a Switch. I realize now when I, I bring my Switch with me everywhere, but I don't have like enough games on it just yet to where I'm constantly playing it when I get the chance. I have like Diamond, Pokemon Diamond, and then yeah. like Smash, and those are like the, and then Animal Crossing, and I jump between those three. Um, but like, I feel like there's no, there's definitely a place for handheld gaming in like an adult life, especially since you're so busy all the time. Yeah. Like, I've I've found myself using my Switch more than I more than I would if I had a more than I would you know what I'm trying to say yeah. right like I, I I use it more than I think I would uh, and enough to justify saying that I that it was worth the purchase yeah and like a Steam Deck I could see myself using just as much and also like just a thought um, like the more advanced like phones get and stuff the more they're just gonna be like people are gonna you know. Start thinking of like, oh, I'm just gonna download an emulator or mm-hmm. like you know, and play these games on. My well, I know, I know, iPhones are impossible. IPhone. Fucking emulators on that. That's the only thing that upset me when I switched. Uh, I switched. I, I was on an Android for so long, and then I got an iPhone and I found out there was no emulators. Oh, I about cried, dude. Yeah, but you know, iPhones though, you know, <laughs> Bill Gates. Bless you. Thank you. Um, Nintendo Switch Sports came out. I we got uh, a seven. <laughs> yeah, it, it's. I think it's really just their fault for this the sports they chose. I think we uh, give it a few months while they do their DLC patches and get golf in there. And the next <laughs> can have sports as DLC packages. Yeah, it'll be free though. It'll be free DLC. So, uh, so golf comes out in like three months or something. Man, I can't wait for my golf patch. But uh, I think once, once it's golf fully out, gonna change the game. Dude. Once, once it's fully out, it'll be a. It'll be what it used to be because like switch just because it's had a slow start does not mean it's not gonna be the game that it is right? i mean people are gonna it's fucking still gonna buy be it. the big like, family game i don't have any concern that 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 game is gonna make money like it's nintendo yeah they'll figure like out if i way. brought a switch with switch sports it like you guys what you guys would be like well f- f- you're not gonna say fucking no right it's i would switch give it a sports. shot like yeah. it's <laughs> Depends on what sports they it's have. they have uh, at the start right now they have sword fighting, uh, <laughs> table tennis I believe or chimbala or whatever, uh, which is vo- their volleyball, uh, soccer, and uh, fucking what is it bowling? Hell it, yeah! So they have like they have they're, they're missing boxing, baseball, uh, golf, we're missing everything. You all know? of the, all, all three of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I don't know. I feel like Nintendo could release Pee Pee Poo Poo 2 and <laughs> people would go ape shit and That's buy the game. That's fair. I've noticed, it's like, a, it's a great Nintendo game. fanboys are Ninten- fanboys Nintendo for fans sure. Nintendo fans love Nintendo. My, my Nintendo reactions do significantly better than other videos for some reason. Because I just feel like Nintendo's like the cutesy, like, oh, look, our dude, in, like, our plumber in his little overalls and shit, and this dude who's an elf, that, <laughs> you know, he wears a sleeping cap on his head and shit, and I don't know. And it's like, just, I think it's just because you grow up with Nintendo, so it's like it's like being a it's like growing up and it's like Disney is something you'll always be attached to as well. So it's like you're just like I'm always yeah. I can always see Nintendo games like, yeah, hey, that makes sense. It's Nintendo. Yeah. They make that. I like yeah. like we don't a triple A studio else. can go, Hey, here's my game, and I'll go, Hey, that's shit. Whereas <laughs> Nintendo will go, Hey, here's my game, I'll be like, Yeah, well you're Nintendo, you know. Yeah. If I don't like it, there's there's a kid out there that'll like it. Like I don't fucking like Pikmin. But I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure if Pikmin weird. Four came out, someone would be happy about it, right? <laughs> there, there is someone. a Pikmin fan out there. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's very. Um, I say that like just, Pikmin as a game is not fun. It is a fun game. Yeah, I just feel like Nintendo has never been like the target of any like 
criticism in that regard. Once they killed like, even, Sega, they've never had to worry about anything. Yeah. <laughs> they're like they're the they are this they they don't have any competition anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sega's making movies. Yeah. Yeah, damn good movies. Uh, it's all fun. You guys want to see the Mega Man movie when it comes out? I mean, if it's anything like Sonic 2, then I'd be down. Unless Mega Man X, I don't want to talk about no. it. I saw the, uh, I saw the, it, it really upsets me, but I saw like some leaked information about the, uh, what the Mario movie might be like. Oh, I heard that the art style was, uh, so according to the leak, the art style is close to that of Hotel Transylvania. Mario and Luigi have their Brooklyn accents. And uh, over throughout the course of the movie, there's a like a, a narration by Luigi, like Charlie Day, like so I so I can I, I'm trying to like grasp what the story would be from that, but uh, like and also the real world exists in this one again, like how the old you know the old Mario movie where it's like the real world and then whatever the fuck was the. Like the oh, Mario world, Mushroom Kingdom, and yeah, it's like the fucking underground. Of so that's got me. That's people. got me worried. But I don't know. I'm just because I went back and rewatched the old Mario movie to like to to really. Because there's a video slaps. I'm doing where I'm where I'm like trying to compare video game movies. You know what's weird? Because there's oh. another, there's another leak with um, oh, crap, crap, Chris Pratt, and who plays his brother again? Who plays Luigi? Charlie Day. Charlie Day. Charlie Day. Charlie Day. So there's a leak with um, both of those two acknowledging that they're behind 9/11 inside that nice. um, universe and stuff. <laughs> so I you keep on cannot changing. imagine. It, it's <laughs> illumination, right? Yeah. I couldn't imagine a 9/11. Well, and see, that's the thing. Uh, that's maybe what... minions, but not <laughs> <laughs> minions. At, well, I mean, there's the I, fucking. I could have there's the Hitler since... reference in minions. Yeah, that shit. Is there really yeah, Hitler? Bro, minions? I would not be surprised Hitler if minions, minions two has a 9/11 joke in it. We That'll talk about 9-11 too much on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, it almost reminds me of that terrible tragedy. <laughs> Someone save me because I can't come up with anything I'm about. To, I'm just about perfect. Twitter literally saved me right there. First thing that popped up in front of me, I knew we needed to talk about this. Batman released NFTs. Oh. Isn't it releasing the NFTs, man, the though? hero, the hero we thought we needed, and no, it wasn't, and that now wasn't we've lost. That, that, so that was Bruce. That's Bruce. <laughs> yeah, Bruce Wayne. <laughs> DC Bruce Wayne. released Bat Cowls, the NFTs, and they've been hammering your home feed with them on Twitter. I if you so that. much as tweeted one thing with the word NFT in it, your Twitter's fucked. You're yeah. not safe ever again. <laughs> I have not been able to escape NFT Twitter. Since I, I made one tweet on April Fools about releasing a victory NFT, <laughs> my Twitter's dead. I can't, I can't, I can't do anything. It's, it's that or the, or like the Dream SMP. I can't. I was just say because uh, the UFC and um, is doing a lot of things with like crypto and stuff because they're partnering up with them. And I can't like there's literally fighters that you can like bet your crypto money on and like make off that's of and fucking stuff like terrifying. That. I know you can sports bet with Bitcoin and Ethereum now. Yeah, but, like that's been around for a bit. I remember I made I'm, I think I made like a, a football Ethereum bet way back when. Didn't didn't do anything for me really. Um, By the way, if you're wanting to bet on the on the Raiders at all winning this time of the year, this <laughs> next year coming up, this is the time to do. it. See, I, I would say that, right? But I feel like I'm going to go to a game, and I feel like that's going to be the thing that jinxes them for the rest of the season. Don't go to a game. Yeah, I know. <laughs> just, ba it's, it's... just bank on them. Just bank on them. So I was looking. What's the? Oh, um, oh you we're, remember that bet that we were that we uh, mm -hmm. were talking about and stuff? I went back and I looked at that roster. I'm like, it's the, it wasn't a bad roster from that year. It wasn't a bad one for this come upcoming year. It's it's rough. I was I was I did like a tweet that never went out. I was thinking about it. like I'm a Lakers, Raiders, and Man United fan, and like so it's like and we have great players, but we're just shit teams all around, like entirely. Yeah. <laughs> so every single one of my teams is not good by virtue of the team, but it's good by virtue of the players that are on the team. <laughs> the Lakers are a different story of why they're just bad overall they're having a rough patch right now i feel like they just have too many people who are like give me the ball and i'll score they the exact opposite of the issue with the nets yeah <laughs> yeah where I the don't... nets need a leader and they they just haven't figured that out yet fucking they had ben simmons on. i don't know ben, why ben simmons i, I was why watching the ben stephen simmons? a smith thing where he tears ben simmons at, like to shreds yeah. it's so funny as someone who doesn't like who isn't heavily into sports like stephen a smith is probably the most like the most branched out 
part of ESPN's entire like budget. He gets to people who don't see sports on the regular, like me. Whereas like I'll see a Stephen A. Smith rant and I'll be like, you know what? Yeah, fuck Ben Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> I just oh fuck. I love and hate Stephen A. because yes, he's a personality and shit. But oh my god, is he the epitome of like a person trying to portray someone he's not because granted he knows a lot about basketball he's been covering it for you know x amount of years if you see this dude's mma takes they're fucking horrible <laughs> well i mean he's a is he's more of like a traditional sports ball guy right yeah i mean and it goes and it plays into like that character facet and shit but like it's different when it's with mma because it's different from any other sport this isn't two. This isn't. These aren't teams and shit that are coming in. This is one team that's going to bring in one guy to fight your one guy that you're going to coach and shit. You're going to set a date and then you guys are going to fight, and that's going to be it. You know, and you can prepare six months in advance. You can prepare prepare a whole year and still have the fight end in like less than forty seconds. Mm-hmm. There's a that's there's still a high probability of that, and for Stephen A. Smith to be like, oh. Conor McGregor is the greatest person alive, but Donald Cerrone, he quit in the middle of the fight. And I'm like, have you ever been cut, punched by Conor McGregor? You ever been punched in general? <laughs> Stephen A. Stephen A. Smith practices dick punches, bro. Does he? Yeah, you ever see him? He see uh, seen him like hit Pat. It's not pretty. He like he's he was practicing the hook, and the hook was just as low as his dick was. <laughs> well, I mean, like you know, those who can't do teach, and those who can't teach talk about it, right? Like. <laughs> That's a really good analogy. That's why. Know. That's why there's so many podcasts now. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! No, yes. um, shit. What has been? So the, they just did a meeting with Marvel and planned out the next ten years of the MCU. Yes, they have. Um, I hope they don't tell me a single fucking thing about it. I want them to hide every single title for every single movie from now on. I don't I want to see. Them, a, I don't I want, want see them to phase stop chart. leaking their movie uh-huh. in trailers. Yeah, God damn Doctor it. Strange has had like six scenes released by now. God damn it! Like the movie comes out in five days, not even. <laughs> I got my tickets for Thursday night. Oh shit! I need to buy my tickets. <laughs> I'm gonna see it as there's, soon as I get there's there's actually settled. like a lot of seats open. Like I'm at the 10:20 showing, and the entire theater is like half like half open. Really? Yeah, I know, wild. but I'm gonna be is seeing it in like world? the city, so it'll be like. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so it's like I'm gonna have to. Are you watching it back house. home? No, I got I I got work off on Thursday, oh, so nice. I'm going to see it Thursday night. Is it opening night on yeah. Thursday night? See, I uh, want to come. There's still seats. <laughs> um, I'm really excited. Like my excitement hasn't been super high, but my expectations are high. It's I didn't. I've, I've been worries. trying to avoid spoilers to death, but I I feel like th- this is since it's, since Marvel spoiled it themselves. This has been popping up on my Instagram feed, but did they spoil who is all in the Illuminati already? Not like, everyone. I saw. But so it's a you Illuminati. Be, like, they're, like, the they're Illuminati's called, in it. The, yeah. the Illuminati's confirmed for this. Is what's happening. What you have to be <laughs> careful though is that on Twitter, there's been a lot of stuff floating around, like actual like images Weeks. of the full. Like, that's, the what Illuminati. I, that's what I've, I've the seen. One scene, I've seen one. And that's yeah, been I only saw one, really but it was the one that me. they showed in the trailers. So. Yes, and I watched that one. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that was a leak. I'm just too done to put it together right now. Right now, I don't care. I yeah. also do. I need to. Would this make more? Would this be better if I were, were watching like Loki and stuff? And I wouldn't watch Loki. Okay, what about Wandavision? Yep. I, I would for watch for the movies, in order to be absolutely like on board, you would need probably just Wandavision. How many and episodes like of Wandavision? Five. Only five? Yeah. No, it's nine. Is it really? It's nine, but they're only thirty minutes. I. Distinctly the, feel like it was only five. Was nine. I remember. Is the it. last fight like two episodes in itself? No, I just remember it was nine weeks. I still gotta finish Moon Knight though. This last episode. Oh, Moon Knight's so fucking. Is it? Good. Is it five themed episodes? Is yeah, that what it is? five. Five. Well, the first three are it goes 50, 60, 70s. Episode four catches you up in the real world, and then episode and at the same time shows the like the fallout of what happened. In 70s. So shit starts episode, going down. Yeah, by shit episodes. starts going down in episode four. Okay. Episode. The boner is in episode four. <laughs> no, that's episode five. Oh. Episode five is the eighties one. Gotcha. And then six is the Halloween one. That's oh, the one. my gotcha. favorite episode. Halloween. Yeah, but One Division's a really good watch, even if like, but that it's a great one, show. And then I would say, 
<sighs> Loki, as much as you you might not enjoy it, like if you even if you just watched the last episode, <laughs> no, I, I, I like. I, I would watch Loki. I not, loved Loki, not for Doctor Strange, but I would just watch Loki in general. Loki's a fantastic. It was show. one of my it's, favorites out of the show. I think I'm gonna um, do that, but. Uh, and but I'm on Marvel's before what ifs. Doctor Strange. What what if you Don't, have to watch no, what if? No, just yeah. just let them tell you in the movie about what if. Don't watch what if. Okay. What if is yeah. garbage. Because no, I, I watched liked it. What no, if is dude, terrible, I, dude. I watched their fucking zombie one, bro. Marvel did that in their comics, and they did a way better well, that's vision the thing. of it. They, TJ, it's Marvel. <laughs> what do you mean Marvel did it in their comics? It's them. <laughs> <laughs> of course they know they did it in their comics. They used like, that to make the what episode. Is, yes, uh, but like to do and it, the and reason, MCU people was so lame, bro. But that was the they point can't. of the show. It was this is that's their universe. <laughs> it was just it was just way better. When there was so much. There was a lot of wasted potential in what if. Well, it's got a, it's got a second zombies episode planned right so. they're doing a, a full season of actual marvel zombies not what if zombies gotcha. so it's going to be an is actual it with, adaptation it? it's going to be an animated show that's an adaptation of the comic oh thank you god but I, I still just i don't know i feel like so what if is an example of how not to do a show like that because they decided okay we're going to do a a non excuse me we're going to do a non-canonical animated show that tells some pretty wacky stories about, like, what if this happened, right? Instead, half the episodes are, what if this character did this instead of this character? You remember, the, you remember problem, this yeah. movie? We're going to do this movie, but with this character. They pull the a Xenoverse character. where it's like, it's not, it's not necessarily what ifs. It's, yeah. it's, it's like, it's the LaCroix of what ifs. Yeah, it's really <laughs> oh my weird. God. There's only, there's only had... three episodes that are actual, like, what ifs. The, the Doctor Strange one. It's really good. Killmonger's one I like. Uh, even even, if, even though it goes a little over the top, it is like a. It is like it's a true. It's the most yeah. what like it's the it's most a different. different story. Yeah. There's the Doctor Strange one, the Th Thor one is really good. The Party Thor one is actually really well done, and then um, I forget. Uh, I'm just not a big fan of like, the Captain animation Carter. stuff. There no, was Captain fuck Carter. Captain Carter, man. That shit sucked. Um, I was I was so upset because I was really excited for it, and it's literally just the first Avenger, mm -hmm. but with Peggy Carter. Yeah. And I'm like, there's nothing different about this. You know, the, there was like one scene they don't touch on at all, and I think it's like a really cool bit of the where like I see it and I go, I want to know more about that. Mm -hmm. It's when they go to grab I think Gamora. For the for the champion, yeah, and Iron Man's just in a fucking uh, full on Warhammer forty thick forty k neck, like he's just in a Warhammer suit. Like he decided he didn't make an Iron Man suit. He's in a full on like bulky Warhammer yeah. costume. And I want to know what made him pick that. I want to know what made him decide that he needs that much armor that he can like practically carry a fucking hammer. Well, and it's but, it's that that's the, that's the version of Gamora that killed Thanos and is now wearing his armor. So I'm like. I they they had an episode about that and they cut it and I'm like oh I didn't know I would that. have loved to have seen that episode the the, 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 the last start. episode is is I like that the plot I, I like the way they set up that yeah plot. it's very Power Rangers the what if Ultron the, the what if Ultron one episode was pretty alright I just I don't know I just feel well number one the animation threw me off the animation is terrible and I feel like it's. It, how you you have what if and in the same year arcane comes out which oh, literally shows you that's, yeah. the boundless limits of what animation can do but and then you have what if is it fair to compare things to Ar arcane is like a is like a st is, is is like a stand stand I'm only going to compare like because marvel's excuse for why what if was looked so lackluster was covid oh really and yet arcane you, was made during the uh, yeah. exact same production time it's the same thing that i have against no way home in the sense that yeah i love no way home because it's a great it, it's a great fun movie but that movie looks ugly and the problem with no way home they said oh covid delays made us rush vfx and stuff i'm like the batman was in production for a lot less time than no way home and it looks so much better yeah. because they knew exactly what they were is spending a, their money on. Is that on. a practical effects thing, though? Is it because they had the I think set that they it's built? It's a planning thing. They literally didn't shoot half of No Way Home. Like, half of that movie is pure. The whole bridge fight with Doc Ock, they spent, I think, like two hours shooting with Alfred Molina that day when they probably needed a full week with him. So 80% of him in that scene is CGI. Like, full-on, like actual like close-up shots of him talking are full cgi because they just didn't get the coverage needed 
Yeah. Because they don't plan these movies out in advance. They, like, barely do the scope of pre-production for money. Yeah. I think it's fair to judge them on the quality of that, but as far as, like, comparing how, like, the Batman, like, went about things in No Way Home, I think there's too many outliers to be comparing the two, if, that, if, what's, if you know what I mean. Like... Not necessarily. I mean, the production schedules were very close. Were, were very closely, like, lengthwise. The only difference is that when the Batman suffered COVID delays, they just stopped production. Because whenever a crew member or Pattinson himself got COVID, they just stopped production. That's why yeah. it took so long to make the movie. The actual production time was the same, if not shorter, than No Way Home. It's just they knew exactly what, what they were making. Yeah, but the Batman didn't need CGI as much as the Spider-Man does. Actually, the Batman... It, no. Well, Spider-Man doesn't need that much CGI, actually. None of those movies need that much CGI. Yeah. There are a lot of there are a lot of techniques, and that's why the Batman does look so good. Is because they knew, okay, we're gonna limit ourselves in CGI and use it when we need it. <laughs> so all like the flying stuff of him, like flying in the squirrel suit, that's like blue. That's when they started using blue screens, yeah. and the final, the whole final battle is done on a blue screen sound stage. But everything else, you know, they knew like, okay, we can actually do this on location or on a set or use the LED screens around instead of green screen. No Way Home is like, oh, we're on such a tight schedule to get this movie out because we don't want to delay it. Mm -hmm. Warner Brothers was comfortable delaying the Batman because they're like, we know what we have. We want to take time. It's like any good game that gets delayed. They say, we know what we have. We want to delay it because we want the filmmakers to have more time to like polish it. That's why it looks so good. Yeah. No Way Home, they guys, said, I promise Star Citizen we're not good, fucking... Guys. Keep, please keep buying Star Citizen, guys. I promise it'll be good one day. <laughs> <laughs> um... They, 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 you know, Sony's like, we're not going to delay No Way Home because everyone wants to see this. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure Spider-Man fans would have been okay if you delayed that movie if it looked, like, just a little bit better. Yeah. And I'm not saying, like, oh, well, it's we would have gotten Morbius first. Yeah, we would have so, gotten so Morbius think about, first. So think, think about how, like, it, and, and not even joking, like, the amount of how the amount of appreciation you would have after that to, to be like, <laughs> okay... They took their time. Like, <laughs> no, Joe Little just took his time taking a dump. Like, after, like if, they, yeah. Like if if Sony just starts making movies like they have been, like the El Muerto announcement, yeah. which oh my god, if they just, I think Sony's just creating palate cleansers for Marvel movies. No, they're just it's, dropping it, movies where you're like, dropping, okay, this is what could have been. They're doing this so that they can maintain their rights to the characters uh, because the more obscure characters they pull out of the woodwork to make movies for the more they own the rights to all these characters so that they can possibly do their big crossover movie i can't wait for the 3d man movie <laughs> i mean big wheel why are we getting mexican <laughs> spider-man though why why it's, is it not miles morales i don't think it, it's not mexican it's spider-man not he's like the punisher a, but bane like only has like two comics mm-hmm not even it's like two it, comic it, appearances. It's Bane without steroids, essentially. Is Jared Leto running Sony too? These seems like very Jared Leto decisions that are being. I made. I literally I don't understand what's going on, and it's weird because they have the their two sides. The edge verse. The edge verse of Spider Man. They have Venom, Morbius, and like Morbius Venom makes sense. That's more or less a household name, you know. People know who Venom is. Yeah. But then Morbius was like. Really? Why? You have to. You the only way you knew Morbius is if you played the Spider Man three game. That's literally it. Yeah, but I never still, saw him once in any comics. I, I read. Yeah, he does not show up in Spider-Man comics enough. Like he shows up in Blade way more often. Yeah, so it's mm -hmm. like that. The only thing I knew about him was in the Spider-Man Three game. Yeah. That's why I saw his name and I was like, "Oh, I know that guy." And I it's knew like, that's I, it. I knew that he was a Spider-Man villain. I just like when they said like, "Oh, we're making a Morbius movie." I'm like, I like the idea, but like, why? <laughs> Morbius is a character you throw in a movie to fight Blade and maybe die. Like that's mm. it. Or maybe he has, or like maybe Homeboy is like you know has exactly. And shit. Yeah, they yeah. would benefit so much from just do it from a Suicide Squad mentality where they're not super attached to these fucking random ass characters. Yeah. If they did a Suicide Squad like with like the Thunderbolts, well, I guess the Thunderbolts are being worked on right now. Yeah. But uh, like throw all these fucking characters we don't give a fuck about. Sinister Six is not gonna work with these characters. No. No. Would they? Where's the? Who's the leader? Who's leading? Vulture. Vulture. Really, we're gonna have Vulture be in charge of fucking uh, instead of, of William people, Defoe? Like, they're, they're, like, think about it. There's no goblin in this universe. Yeah. There's no, there's no like, there's all three of the main villains are arguably not in this universe. <laughs> like, we don't get our like, Sinister Six so far is 
Vulture, the Morbius, Sinister Six is Raven, the bench for and the Sinister El Six. Muerto. <laughs> I'm like, homie. Like like what 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 is this El Muerto movie gonna be? Is it just gonna be a wrestling movie? Like Oh my it's god. It's Bone Sauce coming back. Bone Sauce coming back. <laughs> No, for real. Oh, like, oh, did you see they cut the That's homophobic? They joke did, from yeah. Spider Man's uh, TV release. What? Yeah, yeah, they they cut the joke where he mentions Bone Saw's cute outfit. Nice outfit. Did your husband make it for you? I was like, oh. Yeah, yeah, they they cut that joke from the movie for TV release. That's crazy. I don't know. I just feel like the state of the state of movies like that right now. Because Sony has two sides. They have their Spider Verse, like animated. And mm. whether or not it's animated or live oh, yeah, action. Sony makes banger animated movies, and then they just... Open season? Dude, open season actually goes hard. It does. It, opens, it does. It's just that's a very strange pool <laughs> to go when you go, man, they make great movies. <laughs> it's it's the only Sony one I, I can think of off but the top Sony of my head. Has been, Sony has been, uh, with the exception of the Emoji movie, Sony's been on a fucking roll with animation with Spider-Verse and Mitchell's vs. the Machines versus Machines and really now good. Across the Spider-Verse and then their sequel. And I think that's the thing. And I was talking to someone about Disney lately and how I call Encanto mid-Canto because I've ever noticed that Disney movies, like Disney animated movies, have looked exactly the same oh. yes. since Frozen. Uh -huh. Nothing See, has changed. That's not what I was gonna say. I, I was gonna say they the plots have been getting simpler. Well, the plots have been getting simpler, but also just visually, they're doing nothing to push the boundary of animation like even farther. I will say the the they're I think what they are working on and why it's so non noticeable right now is I think they're working on facial expression. I saw that too. Like, like apparently their big they're getting thing like, is like making women more like animated in the face. Like they they noticed like in these last two yeah. movies, like they've been they've had more like. I guess like the the thing in animation is like the like the, it's a common male character will make a funny face, right? But you don't see female characters doing it often. And like a big thing that Encanto and Turning Red did is was like exaggerate the female well, and expression. See, turning uh, Pixar Pixar's its own thing. I feel mm -hmm. like Pixar is in its own realm. Pixar is doing a lot because Luca and Turning Red were beautiful. Like while the story for Turning Red wasn't like obviously for me, I feel like it's meant more for like younger girls. They're, they're making movies for the nerds right now. They need to come back around. Well, for like, some, some of us well, the... holy shit, the animation in that movie is gorgeous. That's no, great. Yeah. The, the way they animate the characters is like so fun. And like, it's just visually funny watching some of the characters do things. And like, but Disney animation has just been in the same rut, movie in, movie out. But then you have and this Sony. this is the same company who built a hair program yeah. from the ground up for Incredibles. Yeah, well, no, that was Pixar. Oh, fuck! I, I still so, think like that—that that still counts, bro, right? Like, it, Disney, it, well, no, because Disney's yeah. a, Disney's animation division just operates completely independently. Oh, like they don't Pixar, share any oh, of the no, no, no. P Pixar, Pixar is like, it's like its own like yeah. studio. It's they only they just get distributed by Disney. Oh, that's wild! I see. Yeah, yeah. Toy Story was actually not. It and was going to be. Not, I am not the only one who thinks that. That's crazy. It, it's wild because I know, like, I see a lot of the things that say, "Oh, new Disney movies," and it's like. Pixar movies, and I'm like, yeah, Disney distributes these movies, and they own these movies, but they have no control over Disney's how these movies like are made. Disney's kind of like a genre now, more so than yeah. the... Yeah. <laughs> Disney is just purely the brand right now, except for Madagascar whenever you see... <laughs> <laughs> whenever you see, like, Disney animation, that's, like, Disney's own, like, they have control over how those movies are made. So, like, Tangled through Encanto are all Disney animation movies. Raya was Disney... Um, what I I can't even remember because they just I feel like are you, so non. While we're on the topic of this, I feel like Moana. The, yeah, the was it, was, gone, was yeah. Moana Pixar? Yeah. yeah, it wasn't. Oh, Disney, Disney, was Disney. Disney. All right, Disney needs to get slapped for that movie. And um, if they're singing, it's more likely Disney. Is my thought. Yeah, because, yeah. Pixar hasn't made a musical. Yeah. No. Um, I feel like when it comes to like Pixar versus Disney, you'll see a lot more people crying like. Not crying. We'll point out to Disney that they're just kind of like they're just making stories about people of color just for the sake of it, while like Pixar like goes into like you know I guess a deeper dive into like you know people them like the culture that they're trying to represent, get actual people on board with it though too. I didn't mean they did that for Moana on the Disney side, but I still feel like there's a lot of flaws in that movie. Mm -hmm. No, no, I, I you're one hundred percent right. But Disney, for all its flaws and everything they make, they'll never make a terrible movie. Like the, the I I feel like I, it's one thing I've noticed. Like any time I'm going to bed now, I'll throw on a Disney Dang movie before man. I pop in before I lay down, and it's like 
Monsters it's, University. What's it called? Monsters University. There we go. What? That was a really bad movie. You don't like Monsters University? <laughs> it's just be, it's just a lot. I, I Monsters University is an anime filler. That's all that movie is. Monsters University is, to me is so is almost better than the first one. Pixar will do these things where... I do agree with you, yes. They make... Pixar will make Wait, then that makes you even more wrong if you think that Monsters, <laughs> Inc. is a bad movie. It's just... No, 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 no. Monsters, Inc. is not a bad movie. But I would much rather watch uh, Monsters, University than Monsters, Inc., though. Interesting. Disney, Pixar will make sequels to movies purely to test out new, like... Avenues yeah. and softwares and stuff like that. Toy Story Four. The only reason they made that was to test out their hair simulation and like <laughs> textures. That movie did not. When everyone hey, agrees, y'all, you want to see Woody with some realistic yeah. hair? Toy Story is like a big mechanical Marvel every yeah. time. Yeah. And Incredibles Two, sadly, was not made for the story that was made to. That was what's that movie got real like. Dark at some point. I didn't like. I didn't like Incredibles too. Yeah, I, I feel I, like. Yeah. It got real terrorist. It was good. It end. was good until they overpower over the top to the terror, yeah. like the the anti villain or like the villain stuff. Yeah. It it had it was good. It had a good first and second act. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then the villain just turned out to be your generic villain. Like, oh, you made me this way yeah, and shit. Like, and like, ah, come on. It there's was like so 80, close. 80, there's eighty thousand of you who have the same backstory. And that being said, I would totally watch an Incredibles three if they made. They had, like, no. such a good... Samuel like, Jackson needs a bigger role in that one, though. Yeah. They had such a good thing going with the screen slaver. Like, that was such a cool character and a cool villain. And, like, it, there was actually, like, some genuinely, like, kind of scary elements about mm -hmm. it. And then they just completely fucked it into the ground. And the we're scene like, no. where she sneaks into his, the apartment yeah, is that's a so scene. good for, a, for a, like, a Disney movie. Yeah. Uh, I just feel... There's, I feel like there's just too much... I feel like when you're just painting into, like, a Disney corner... You what's called, you write your stories and you base your outcomes based on whatever is going to be like, you know, mm -hmm. Disney, there has to be a happy ending and shit. Mm -hmm. I would have really liked it for Incredibles too. You just don't figure out who, who like, who's the screensaver is yeah. and stuff. Maybe have one final big battle and stuff like that. And like, you know, there they go. Like a so Scooby-Doo. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel like, well, and that's what, that's why I'm really enjoying Moon Knight is because I feel like oh, they're actually letting Marvel do something like. Not Marvel. They're actually letting a like a creative do something within these bounds of this universe. And while it's not, I know a lot of people are like Moon Knight needs to be bloody, and I'm like, it's not that you know, it's not that bloody, but it you know, there's there's. I don't think good, it needs to be bloody, but like the I, there's some good watched, action. I yeah. haven't watched episodes three or four, <laughs> three, four or five yet. Is it is it has it stepped up in like uh, combat? Like episode more three fighting? has some good action. Four and f so four and five actually, and this isn't a spoiler. There, I would say. Out of every single, out of all five episodes, we have about like twenty minutes, not even screen time of Moon Knight himself, which is great because while I love seeing Moon Knight and I love seeing the action, the stuff they've done with the character so good. is 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 wonderful so because it, it feels like an origin story now. It doesn't feel like my problem with some of the other Disney Plus shows, especially like I really enjoyed Hawkeye. Hawkeye was really fun, but I feel like they focused too much on giving us an action scene every episode that we lost a lot of development for Kate. Mm -hmm. And Kate kind of became like this one-off character where like by the end I really cared for her and I really loved her character and I want to see more. But it's just like I've kind of forgotten about her already. Yeah. Whereas Moon Knight, they've done so much to make us care about every single one of his personalities, whether we see except it or not. For, except for... Miss Stephen Grant. Just, I love Stephen. I fucking hate him. I, I think Steven I think it's so you much. either love or hate him. Stephen Grant's so a is it, is little it the fucking part? Sim, is it like dog. The, oh, it's just the fact that he's like, dude. You just gotta keep watching. Homeboy, in my opinion, homie does some fuck shit. All right? <laughs> he's he, I love Stephen. You know which one I'm fucking talking about, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. That's some fuck shit. That's some you know weird what I shit. Like? I love that bit, and you'll see it in episode three. But there's a bit where, on screen. He turns from Mark to Steven. Oh, it's just like yeah. it's brilliant. Like the way that Oscar Isaac does it. And I feel like they've given us so much to learn about this character and what makes him tick. And even the side characters like Layla and surprisingly, like by the fourth Haro. episode, like Arthur Harrow, like I really like him as a villain. So like I feel like they're giving us enough to pay off for a really satisfying uh finale. And that was my issue with WandaVision. If if you get around to watching it. 
they do a lot of setup in each episode and it's really creative too because they go through the decades of television and it's really funny it's really like creative mm -hmm. but then by like episode six they start it's introducing back formula. <laughs> it's back to formula they start introducing some really weird things and then there's literally two episodes they take two episodes to have one character tell the audience everything mm -hmm. that happened to lead you up to yeah. that point instead of showing rather than telling versus versus moon knight which is now giving us like because you saw episode four right yeah yeah moon knight takes you through twists and turns in mark and slash steven's brain to show okay what's happening where are we is you know what what why why are we in this location now which is really fucking cool instead of like huh. oh i'm gonna sit down with arthur harrow and arthur's gonna tell me about my two personalities i think it goes to show something that like these Marvel shows do better. Like all of my favorite episodes and stuff are usually the ones that are the l most divulged from the main MCU. Like yeah. the ones that don't talk about anything from the continuity. And, and Moon Knight has benefited from being, for the most part, mostly disconnected from the MCU, There's save for one the, reference. Uh, There's a snap uh, reference, I believe. Oh, I don't even remember that. It's, no, I don't. It's, it like, it's, sorry, it's the Global Repatriation Society. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, reference, which talks about the people who get, uh, which, if you didn't watch Falcon and the Winter Soldier, it's it, like they're, they're a big thing in that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they do mention that. But besides that, there's literally no references to the MCU. Yeah, which I'm like, and I think that's what makes it like refreshing. it gives it plenty of room to breathe. Like it's it, when when you're not constantly thinking like with Hawkeye, the big issue was while it was coming out, every episode people were like, oh, are we going to see this person? Or are we going to see yeah. this person? And then like we, we eventually we did end up getting two cameos, but it was like everybody was just like, oh, are we going to see Spider-Man? Like, oh, are we going to see like it was more it was less of. It was. No, I never heard anybody go. Ooh, I want to see Hawkeye do something cool this episode. Yeah, <laughs> no, one, no one cared about the show. They just cared about what came, and that was the thing. Spider Man. I, I I will die on this hill. Like, Spider Man. Hawkeye goes decent. to a Renaissance fair in one episode, and it's arguably the best I part of the show. Scene. That scene was so much fun. <laughs> that that show had so many like fun scenes and elements, but also some really good elements for his character, like yeah. getting over Black Widow. Mm -hmm. Like that was like some beautiful stuff there, but. I will die on this hill that Spider-Man set a dangerous precedent for not only Marvel, but just movies <laughs> Spider-Man's the battle pass of movies. Spider-Man <laughs> is literally the DLC of movies because it's, it, all it is, is just people like for Dr. Strange to like, who's going to cameo in this movie? And I'm like, I want no one or like four people to cameo. I want only the Illuminati to cameo in this movie yeah. because fuck you. I want to see Dr. Strange do some fuck shit. I want to see Wanda <laughs> do some fuck shit. And I, I unfortunately did get something spoiled for me, and she does do some fuck shit. Oh. oh. Apparently, they're upping the violence in this movie, and I'm really You're excited. Sick. Now give me Blade, you motherfuckers. See, uh, I, I... Give um, me that guy. <laughs> see, the thing with Marvel, right, uh, and this goes back to, like, their thing of releasing so often and, like, not having... Like, and not innovating so quickly. Same with Disney. There's only, there's very few directors and, like, creators who are willing to sit there and really wait on something that they have. And uh, the bi the biggest example, obviously, Avatar, uh, what is it, Age of Water or uh, yeah. Secrets yeah. of Water or something like that, Land of Water. Breath it's of the, the Wild. The, you know, some, the yeah. sequel to the, the second of the five sequels, or the four sequels to the first Avatar movie has been announced finally. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, and this is something I was told when I was really young, so I don't know if this is true or not, but the reason he took so long to make the second movie was to wait so that CGI took long enough and, like, so that he could innovate again. Mm -hmm. He wanted to, because Avatar was such a big showcase for anim animation at the time, he wanted to wait until he could be another impressive showcase of visual and amazing. And I guess when you think about it, you go, I just did an amazing movie with beautiful trees and beautiful forests and beautiful wildlife. Where do I go next? underwater right like that's the that's the next way to go i'm actually pretty excited even though avatar as a whole is very tiring and just the whole idea of like four sequels taking this fucking it needed make. comics or something to hold us over in the I meantime don't, like it, the, the universe needed like a cartoon or something to really keep you like, like honestly a show would have been kind of cool mm -hmm. but here's my question for everyone does everyone really care about Avatar no, that much? No, no, nobody no. cares about the actual plot or like the world. Yeah. It's just, but I feel like this second movie might make me care because the first movie, I went back and watched mm -hmm. it, right? It does not set up for a sequel. No, Av well, and also the, the story's dog shit in Avatar. The story had literally been told like 80 times before. It's not original. It's Pocahontas. It's Dances with it Bulls. Literally, yeah. It's literally every, every single movie about like integrating into culture ever yep. made. 
But it's a literal by, allegory. <laughs> by God, if that movie isn't fucking gorgeous. And that movie did I'll so much for I'll technology and for visual effects. Like they were doing things then that were uh, that are even unthinkable now. Like it's amazing to me how how much like it's ironic that James Cameron says I wanted CGI to like evolve and improve, and instead CGI movies has just devolved. Yeah, but it's it, honestly, it's not it's yeah. not even just CGI. It's just the way that they like the reason like Black Widow looks so shit is because they don't know how to shoot on green screen. They yeah. light things like super. They're like, mm-hmm. oh, we need Scarlett Johansson is running toward the camera. What is this shot? Well, it could be an explosion or it could be that whatever she's running away from is like collapsing in on itself. There may be some fire elements. So we're going to light her like dead on so that you can see it's Scarlett Johansson instead of we're going to light the green screen so everything mm-hmm. looks natural. It's all one color. And you see a silhouette running towards you. That exactly. would have been cooler than seeing Scarlett Johansson's face coming towards you. Because then they had to do face replacement as right, well because it was that, a stunt double. It doesn't even make sense to show the face because the yeah. light is coming from the explosion. Exactly. Yeah. So so that's why it looks so shit because nothing makes sense. Well, James Cameron with Avatar is doing so much to basically take the idea of like in-person filmmaking and instead he's doing digital filmmaking and they did it for the lion king remake the live action which while i don't like that movie they did some really cool stuff because they basically filmed that movie like with real cameras in a virtual world yeah that's so uh... like they set up like fake uh motion capture sets yeah and they would like walk the camera through these sets to get actual like camera shake and stuff like that and um with avatar i'm like the the new one is probably going to look the same if not maybe a little like less than the first one but unless they try and give us something new that we haven't seen before like i'm excited because apparently it follows different characters oh i had some friends go to cinemacon they watched the first like t- 10 minutes of footage from the movie and they said it looked gorgeous and it's none of the like b- there's references to like That's jake the sully best and, part, then. and because my thing was like, how the fuck are you gonna get that same guy back <laughs> yeah. for this next movie? <laughs> like, even like, it was like, how long ago was that movie? Fucking two thousand eight years yeah. ago. Like, yeah, the, like you want us to care about yeah. characters from fucking? And I know a that I know ago? that actor was like, he's he was so excited to come back. Like, he wanted to do another Avatar movie. Yeah. I was like, dude, you are not popular anymore. Yeah, yeah. like what's called like, people know you from this movie alone. He played if that they character think hard enough yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. Like he wasn't even the, he wasn't even the most popular character in his movie, and he's the main character. Like, yeah. it, it, it's but we just wanted so people just want to see two aliens fuck and just not feel weird about it. No, that's, that's right. It. Yeah. Yeah. It I'll was, never forget. I saw Avatar when it came out, and you know it was big chunky 3D glasses. Like it was a pain. I missed that, dude. I missed those. Those glasses were the legit. Those were the best. It was like one of the best theater experiences ever. But. In the front row, there was someone who was hard of hearing, so they had, like, the closed captioning device, or, like, the, 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 Uh it was, like, they would wear wear headphones so that they could hear the movie, but I think they gave him grown-ups instead, because Homeboy was laughing in all the wrong (laughs) parts, and then he left, like, 90 minutes into the movie, and I was, like, 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 literally (laughs) someone would die, and he would just be, like, cracking up. And I thought like it was a it was a joke, but then like he would laugh like during dialogue scenes, like all and like they gave him the wrong movie. Oh, like dude. that shit was funny. <laughs> Wait, is it a? Re- <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm sorry, but like I couldn't imagine watch sitting there and watching a movie, and then like you just you're hearing Adam Sandler doing like <laughs> the Adam Sandler whatever voice, <laughs> like during a death scene. <laughs> You're just watching it's like the, the Endgame death scene, and it's it's like the scene Jack from- and Jill and shit. <laughs> yeah, no, that was funny. I think I think I saw that movie like four times when it came out. That movie Jeez. blew my. I mind. wish I would have seen it in theaters as a kid. I feel like that would have changed my life. It was a it was a great. I saw movie. that movie in theaters. I think I was yeah. I know. Uh, I know. One of the things I want to try once I move and I get my stuff figured out is uh they now that with, with like VR and stuff like that with the tracking VR tracking you have the ability to do stuff like digital filmmaking where all you have yeah. to do is take one like tracker and you can put it on any object and it acts as a digital camera. So if, as long as I'm wearing a ch- bunch of trackers, I can essentially do like motion capture. Yeah. So I want I want to try that out a little bit, see how that goes. But I have to actually make well, I have to learn how to model shit first, throw yeah. it over the animation. But. You know what I'm excited for? Mm. Top Gun. 
Top Gun. <sighs> Top Gun looks so fucking cool. Why do people? Why are people such excited for the, like a f- fucking movie that came out? <laughs> it's, <laughs> like, it's, like cult- it's like the fa- it's a Fast and Furious thing. It's like a cultural phenomenon. Not, I not even so like Top Gun. Why are you is so dog obsessed? Shit. With, well, Top why? Gun <laughs> is dog shit. If I'm being honest, the movie like again the story we've seen it before. Like it, there's just nothing. Sharknado with jets. Is that what no, it is? no, it's just it, it, it's a cool movie because it was like they it was one of the first movies because every single like plane movie they made before like about like aerial combat plane plane movie <laughs> was done like with miniatures or green screens or some kind of vfx it was with the first movie to actually put cameras in the air with fighter jets and while they at the time they couldn't send cameras at that same speed they were capturing like actual dog fights in the air so it was really revolutionary it was really cool also it's a really gay movie the um, homoerotic undertones in that film are so strong. <laughs> oh, dog, what's it called? It's just homies just being with the homies, yeah. bro. And that like, movie laid out the blueprint for all. Yeah, exactly. That. <laughs> that movie invented for all Discord communities. Uh, says that act movie as sus as invented uh, homies being sus around each other. If I'm being honest, that volleyball scene. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was really it was a revolutionary movie. But it kind of just like it went down as like kind of like a little cult classic. And when they announced that they were doing a sequel, I was like, why? Like, why are they going to do a sequel to Top Gun? Like, Is Tom can't... Cruise flying this jet into the Scientology building in L.A.? <laughs> is that how this movie ends? No, no Tom man. Cruise actually surfs the jet in this one. Yeah, he, he does actually, it himself. Yeah. Yeah. Into, but is it into the Scientology, Scientology <laughs> building? That's what all that matters. Well, actually, he kick flips it over the Scientology yeah. building at, at the last minute. Okay, all, all jokes aside, that would be fucking <laughs> <laughs> Um, Tony Hawk sit or like fucking emulator and shit. You know, talk how long has it been since we had a skateboarding movie? Oh, it's like been I feel a like I feel while. like we just, need, we just need movies about simple shit again. Oh, uh, there what's the, what, that one documentary with um, Dogtown and Z Boys? Yeah, that that one. From, but like, documentary is different though. Like I mean, like a comedy movie where it's like or like the, where the crux is skateboarding. Like I, I heard somebody somebody said this. I don't I feel know. Like I was just kind of, like I was cool. watching a podcast. Somebody said this the other day. It's like there's no co- like uh, comedy movies got ruined by the need to have. Uh, like a fucking like a, a character arc and like a happy ending and like character development like a lesson like mm. as soon as they started yeah. developing like a like a you got you watch these people grow t- towards the end like as soon as we stopped doing the Adam Sandler movies where it's just like a funny guy who's good at golf yeah like a, or like a uh, you know like a a dude who's mentally challenged becomes like a yeah you know like a, oh, have you ever seen Hot Rod yeah no, like, that's the perfect example dude, Hot like, Rod like, is fucking amazing like, and same like with Pop Star like. Those yeah. like all of Andy Samberg's and the Lonely Island stuff is so funny because of how like they, all, all that movie is is just like all of their jokes in one movie. Yeah. And they like barely write a story around it. But like here's the thing though too. You look at the dates that those movies were like created and stuff, take a handful of those jokes that they do, mm-hmm. not passing it. And I think <laughs> it's just and I think that's just genuinely like and it's unfortunate. It's because of stuff that happened with like Will and like you know Chris Walker stuff. It's stuff like that that makes people not want to pursue that stuff anymore, though. Too. Mm. I mean, like, because like you're like you're right. People want like people want more out of movies than what they're being given mm-hmm. to. Judd like, Apatow ruined comedies. Change my mind. That's exactly yeah. what yep. they said. That's yeah. exactly Judd, what. They well, said. And you know what's funny is Judd Those Apatow are... is one of my favorite like writers, directors of all time. Because did he's... he do Year One? Uh, no, no. Judd Apatow, he, he did Knocked Up. Um, <laughs> knocked Up wasn't even that he funny. He's responsible for no, that plot see, structure where it has to be like... Well, a, see, that's the thing. Knocked, his films aren't, like, funny. I would say his funniest movie is probably The 40-Year-Old Virgin because that one is, like, consistently, and like, slapstick. Steve yeah. Carell. Like, and Steve, Steve Carell makes and Paul funny. Rudd and Jane Lynch. Like, they're all so funny in that movie. I should movie. really watch that movie. Judd Apatow's movies are, like... He, he, I mean, there, if anything, they're like dramas. Like, Knocked Up isn't a comedy mm-hmm. by the title and the poster. You'd think it's is some kind of goofy where she comedy. Is Knocked Up to be pregnant all movie? No, it's the one where basically the it's basically about a guy he He's gets a girl a pregnant girl. and he basically has to man up and decide oh, to so either so by be the end in of the movie, life. I imagine that yeah. he gets his shit together and they raise a kid. It's right? basically like, like he has to decide to be in her life or not. And, and the movie's like fucking two and a half hours. It's a great film. I love it to death because it's just 
it's so well written it's so well rounded but it's not a comedy uh -huh. there's some comedic elements because like his roommates are funny and they're like stoners and they like make porn jokes and there's this running gag in the movie about spider-man 3 that's fucking hilarious <laughs> because it was made around the time that spider-man 3 was coming out and so yeah, like in different scenes there's like either like a spider-man 3 trailer on the tv or the guys will be like oh shit spider-man 3 starts in seven minutes come on guys we gotta go <laughs> and then paul rudd's character he like does mushrooms with seth rogan and they have like a guy's day together and um then he finally like paul rudd meets up with his wife and she's like you've been I, so distant from I me i cannot lately. see paul rudd and seth rogan hanging out weirdly enough. dude he's but paul rudd is buzz, great in that movie but like best buds are they really life. dude they're stoner yeah. buddies Paul Rudd, Paul, Paul Rudd, Rudd just doesn't look like the way he is as a human. <laughs> like he doesn't. He you right. You're yeah. Right, he honest. looks like a like a like a, a bed commercial for like sleep number, <laughs> but like he oh, acts like, like a, a sleep guy. number, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's a specific type of dude. Like you look like a sleep number, dude, That's my funny. boy. You look like a you know you look like jumping a on the memory a phone purple that mattress, that dude, yourself. Not you know? purple mattress. Oh, that's like yeah, but like yeah, they're still yeah. buddies though too. So like I think the movie is like. It has all his movies are great. I really didn't like Trainwreck. Trainwreck is really not good, and that's because he didn't write it. Amy Schumer wrote it. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Granted, this was before we all you know we all you know know what we know now about yeah. her and shit. My only my favorite bit about that movie is that you see John Cena's. Well, it may not be real, but you see John Cena naked. And it's you're real. gonna look at that's that real. and think that it's <laughs> fake. Well, yeah. Usually, schlongs in movies aren't real. But, but this is John, John Cena's. Cena's. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably prosthetic. Did, no. <laughs> I'll tell you this about, about that man. That thing? Yeah, you can see it. There's no... <laughs> <laughs> um, that was, like, the only funny part of the movie. He, like, gets out of bed and he sees his dick. And I went, ha And then I didn't laugh the rest of the movie. <laughs> it's like watching Animal House with yeah. Rob Lowe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a really good. That's a really good. Analogy. King of Staten Island was really good though. King of Staten Island is yeah. one of I love the few exceptions where it's like it because I knew it was gonna be a story that has like a, a bit yeah. of emotional to it, and also I just like Pete Davidson. I yeah. was watching him when he was on Guy Code, so it was like, I think with for I think well that's just Pete Davidson's life though too, and I mm -hmm. think that's just for Pete Davidson style of comedy or like you know where it's like it's pseudo sad and by like the way in it's your face, so crazy but like you they, know with they, the most outrageous reactions yeah. to it and shit it's crazy that they waited until he finished that movie to give him his happy ending and now he's <laughs> with Kim Kardashian That's funny. and now it's Kim <laughs> it's like, it's like you know I can't really imagine where my life will go here's the here. thing I've like, been I've been seeing so much shit about like him and Kim K and I'm like you know what let them live their life like who are we to judge like her taste in men or his taste in women like if they're happy they're happy, happy. i love pete davidson is one of those people celebrities that i've loved watching forever so he's a, I, it's he's like a it's... really down to earth like at least like writer and comedian mm -hmm. yeah because even his content for snl has been like very not wholesome carries, in the sense of like i oh, think he carries that cast to be quite he, like he, he does and he he fucking like he writes like a maniac he's so funny because, like, when you write for SNL, you're, like, under so many restrictions, but even still, he breaks through that, and he does yeah. some genuinely good stuff. And so, like, I feel like he he's definitely, like, one of my one of my idols in the sense of, like, writing and, mm -hmm. you know, performing. Andrew Schultz, a couple, yeah. like, the comedians oh, who are up Schultz, there. Schultz of... is a freaking different type of dude. You can't... The amount of talent that Schultz has to do crowd work as his main thing, like that's a lost, that's a lost. It's, form. it's a confidence that you can only get from being from New York. It's like the the, yeah. the the lack of fear to look at somebody and go, "I'm not afraid of what you're gonna think of me for making fun of you." It's yeah. like that racist thing that you thought I was gonna say. I'm gonna say it but times ten. <laughs> Well, and see, that's the thing. That's the problem with comedy. And it's like you know? I, I used to try you know, that style of humor. It doesn't work very well unless you keep running with it. You have to keep <laughs> pushing that momentum. Otherwise, you you let up for a second, go maybe that was too much. They eat you. It's over. Yeah, it was as soon as they, they sense remorse, it's immediately yeah. there. Mm -hmm. But then again, like I feel like I knew what you were gonna say next. Like with comedy shows now, people come in with these agendas and shit and these pre notions well, of like, in that space and time and shit. All of perspectives that you have about the world, moral, uh, morally ambiguous or not, are supposed to be left at the door. Mm -hmm. And people bring their shit to these comedy yeah. shows, and then what does the comedian do? Use it against you, yeah. because you're just giving him content. Yeah, Comedy is now... 
for the most part, especially like when it comes to film and TV, it's written by a committee and not comedians. Yes. And I watched The Lost City, that movie with Sandra Bullock and um, Why is Kenny she still, Tatum. What made her say yes to that movie? I don't want to mm. hear, like, the Rent? money. She I don't know. She that genre, <laughs> Well, I mean, here's the thing. So movies like that, like, but She's got a kid exist. in the NFL. <laughs> yeah, they have like there, there's this movie from I figure if it's eighties and nineties called Romancing the Stone. Great movie, love that movie. I used to watch it as a kid. You watched it; it was like my mom's like favorite movie, and like I saw it so many times. And it's so endearing because it's basically it's just so like wholehearted in its story. It understands what it wants to be and needs to be, and it doesn't overstay its welcome. Yeah. And its and its humor isn't forced because it was written by actual comedians. Well, The Lost City... Romancing the Stone sequel with Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I, I'm actually on board. <laughs> um, the, the problem with The Lost City is that, one, it's not funny. I'm watching that movie, and I'm, like, only laughing because the things aren't funny, and I'm, like, laughing out of pain. Like, like it makes, it pains me to hear some of the things these characters say and do, and I'm just, like, they're, people, like, are writing this movie to, like, cater to what they think people want to hear. So, right from the start, you have this character who's an author, and she has a publicist and a social media manager. Well, social media manager is just walking around like this, like taking pictures like this, as if like some boomer wrote it. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, let me just do this TikTok real quick. I'm like, and they're like so exaggerated and over the top. And then the next thing you see them, they're just like an alcoholic. And I'm like, so that's the humor is that they're depressed because they run social media. So they're an alcoholic. That's their character. Her manager it's is real. like this this super bossy woman and it's like oh because she's a bossy woman she has to have a giant pink purse and giant blue stilettos and she has to be awkward in every scenario until the very end of the movie when she's like a boss bitch and it's like i don't get it like why is that supposed to be funny mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden the whole movie they're just making fun of channing tatum like his body parts because for some reason it's funny. So like every ounce of like character that you feel like you could have any remorse for these characters, you don't. I only had like any feel sense of like sympathy for the villain. And that's a problem. <laughs> Isn't the villain fucking Harry Potter? Yeah, it's Daniel Radcliffe. He was terrible in the movie too. Like it, they didn't give him anything to work with and it was just a cringe fest. Because it's just Oh, what are some we're other projects that he's been on that's actually Swiss Army Man. The Swiss Army uh, Man is so good. Guns Akimbo. Guns Akimbo was that good. one's good. I was gonna say Horns. like I do I remember when he first started. I've seen out. none of those three, but I've seen screenshots that all look equally unhinged from all three. Swiss so. Army Man is fucking. Daniel good. Radcliffe just only only agrees to movies where he doesn't, where he either one doesn't have to act or two he gets to do something completely batshit insane. Good yes. for him, honestly. Yeah, no, like trying to be like not like. I like the fact with him is that he doesn't want to like I don't I don't want to be like just the Harry Potter. He's kid really shit. separated himself from that, which is yeah. good. Well, because I was gonna say like even from his early start, like he did something like it because his first like solo gig was The Woman in Black, and granted that was a great fucking great script, executed poorly and shit, but he made the most of that movie and yeah. then like the play for that. That, There's a play? Like, that it starts out as a play, yeah. That's I I think fucking see, scary. I want to yeah. see that play. That what's called if that's a play, that'd be fucking yeah. amazing. And they shit. did it at a local theater one time, and it was a whole terrifying. Fantastic Beast movie came out recently. Yeah, and nobody talked about it. Good. I didn't see it on tw like a single thing about it on Twitter. Like, I maybe I, I saw an IGN thing, and the more we don't yeah. support J.K. Rowling, the better. I think like that's why the old Harry Potter movies are good is because she didn't write them. See, I didn't know that she's been stretching these Fantastic Beast books that she wrote twelve years ago out. I thought these books were being written still. Like no. I thought she was yeah. writing them and publishing them and making the movies as they're going. I no. didn't realize she hasn't published a single thing in like ten years. No, she's, she's a, a legitimate terrible human being, and I'm I'm reader. actually. They said, "Oh, we have two more sequels in the works, but we're not going to greenlight them until this one's successful." And I'm I, I hate to say it, I'm happy this bombed. Because it was time that it's time that Harry Potter fucking died. Like, like <laughs> very it, much so. We yeah. don't need more wizarding. We've got world Percy stuff. Jackson on the way in. Mm -hmm. It's time to give them a shot. I think in general, just oh, man, I don't and I don't even know if Percy Jackson's going to do it though either. Probably well, they're using not. the kid from the Adam Project, so and it looks like they're going to take their time because he's real little. Rick Riordan is actually like writing the show. He's an amazing writer. He's, he's a great writer. Did you ever guys hear about that um, that 
the or hear the book series Fable Haven. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Same. What's it called? Uh, that dude too. Mm-hmm. He's um, done the Red Pyramid series. The, yep. Where like which is the Kane Chronicles, which is the one I read. The only I thing read I worry but. about, and I know it's not like Netflix, but like Thirteen Reasons Why, great book, and the guy who wrote that book, he actually the, he lived grew up in San Luis Obispo. It's like right, right, right where I live. And the whole book is actually written around a fictionalized version of San Luis Obispo. So like yeah. I know all the different like locations that he writes about. And he was involved in the writing process for that show. And yet for some reason that show was just dog shit. Yeah, after season two, it's or after season one, it's just Yeah. It's really <laughs> Yeah. It's really dumb. It's really <laughs> it, bad. It's bad. And like and that's what I'm concerned about like Percy Jackson is that they've tried once before, it didn't work. And obviously that was because, you know, big Hollywood tried to do something with it. I remember I watched the movie before I read the book and I thought it's the best thing ever. I'm yeah. like, this movie fucking rocks. Hell yeah. And then I read the book. I'm like, this movie fucking sucks. <laughs> Hell nah. And so like, I don't know, I just feel like if Dis- like Disney already ruined Artemis Fowl, and I'm like, if Disney's Dude, in charge of Percy I remember, Jackson. I remember when they came out of that shit, and I'm like, this? I remember reading the book, like, someone. The name Artemis Fowl to me was always such a big deal as a kid. I never read the books, but I, whenever I heard it, it was a powerful sounding name. I always remember this one so girl good. in my elementary and middle school, or, like, I went to high school. I, like, spent, like, in my entire, like, childhood growing up with her. She was just always obsessed with it and shit. Like, she grew out of it, but in high school, and, like, you know, it sometimes, like, peek out, and I'm like, this is a little weird. You guys think we'll ever see a 39 good, Clues? Great book series. You guys ever think we'll see a 39 Clues movie series? A TV clues? series? The 39 Clues, that book series that show up at the book fair? There was... So, if you look at the picture of, like, the cover, you'd recognize it. Yeah. Like, um... But I was I was looking at like old book series. Uh, I like just, well, I was bored because I'm trying I'm trying to get into reading again when I move again to try to get myself some hobbies. Um, and I was like I was trying to find old stuff that I've read before. But um, that was one of them. The Thirty nine clues. And it's like I was talking about how that was the best way to get uh, to set yourself up for thirty nine books and get people invested. Yeah, in I your remember series. that shit. Oh my god, those books! Those yeah. are so wild. Dude. <laughs> like I how? Just... How else do you set yourself up for permanent success? I'm gonna write forty books. Yeah. <laughs> uh, books were like those kind of books. Like I remember, like they just you know they took all of my time. And like I don't know, I just feel like there's certain things that you shouldn't touch in movie form. They they did well with the Hunger Games until Mockingjay. Maze Runner was all right. Maze Runner, Maze Runner's good. I actually really enjoyed those movies. They, they've done some things in those movies that, like, went really under the radar, and I don't know why. The Scorch Trials was a really good movie. I have not seen the second or the third the one. The second, I didn't see the third one, but the second one is actually really intense. Like, they did, they, they adapted the action really well, and I remember the first one just kind of catching me by surprise. But, like, Aragon is another one. They butchered that movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Aragon was terrible, and they have an HBO show in the works, but I'm like... The guy, Why are you trying the, to revive something that's exactly. already dead? The author is more interested in writing different books than, you know, trying to put his effort into a TV show of, like, a, a book he wrote when he was in high school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, I don't know. I just feel like it's time for, like, a lot of people to just, like, move on from that. Like, not everything needs to be adapted. When the Illumination Junie B. Jones movie comes out, um, <laughs> I think that's when we've officially hit the, the end of all no, possible no. book <laughs> adapt, adaptations. I think once we hit Judy Moody and shit, you know, getting... Did some... Judy Moody not get a movie? She did. Oh, okay. She oh, she did? did. Judy oh, Moody in the not-so-bummer summer. Yeah! She got a film. <laughs> hit her and Alexander yeah. and the terrible, no-good, horrible, Alexander very bad was all right. Day. Those two would have got along so yeah. well. <laughs> Alexander was an all right movie. I, the Wimpy Kid movies are great. The old Wimpy Kid movies are amazing. The, I, I refuse to watch the reboot. The reboot. The reboot, but the not the, my Roger, not my Roger yeah, version. That shit yeah. was so funny. And then the, I've never the watched show. It. I've never watched like a, an actor get so like blacklisted so fast. <laughs> the show on Disney Plus, I don't want to watch the animated show. There's a show. Yeah, yeah it's an animated one. Yeah, too, but like, <sighs> I was never that a book series. Was weird. Guy it is a weird book series. You know what was a really good fucking movie was um Captain Underpants. Cap- that's what I, yeah. yeah, Captain Underpants they was great. They cared, man. They cared about that shit. I, I read that shit all the time that. as a kid. I didn't watch that. Did you read, read the books as a kid? I pro- probably, but like the little flip, dude, the little flip-to-grams, dude. I was amazed at how just brilliant that movie was. Like it had no right being that smart for it a was kids Sony, movie. Right? 
No, it's DreamWorks. DreamWorks. DreamWorks did really well with that. And the voice acting, like, actually kind of works. Like, it's it's uh, Kevin Hart and I forget who plays the other kid. But, like, grown adults playing kids. Mm-hmm. But it kind of works. It's like how uh, Chip and Dale's about to come out with two grown adults playing. That the... one's gonna, that one's gonna be interesting. Andy to Samberg, watch. John yeah. Mulaney. Because yeah. now it's technology, like all like the like the fictional characters and shit as like yeah. regular. I people. love that genre movie. The 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 Looney Tunes take. Yeah. Man, like man, Tunes like, in action. action. Yeah. Oh That's my god! Cool. I just need more James Marsden driving CGI mm-hmm. animals. <laughs> You're <car>. right. <laughs> that. Finish that trilogy. <laughs> One more. Put him in the. I guess who's like put, put him in the Sonic movie. He is in Sonic. It, no, no, sorry. I meant to say Mario movie. Oh, I don't know yeah. how I fucked that up. God, that and, and see, Illumination is the one animation studio that I just can't get behind. Mm-mm. Their their movies have just been so. They made one. They've only made mid. one good movie, and yeah. that's Despicable Me One. Despic- yeah, Despicable Me was good. Sing was all right. I mean, it has enough for everyone but like it's not for me i can I see why the, people would like it i think the reason why that movie is held back um for so long is because like the song choices and yeah. shit. if it wasn't contracted like re- like pop music i feel like it would have been better. that movie dated itself immediately yeah but like because like i'm a fan of like those singers and shit but mm-hmm. like the song selections are just yeah. so they're so limited any though, any, any anything that licenses yeah. music is gonna date itself immediately yeah. i'm actually because like Tori Kelly's in that movie. Oh yeah. my god! She, like, her what's like for her voice, she can do any like female like cover and stuff like that. And I'm not liking that. You if you have, if you're gonna have a genre of that type of movie and stuff like that, at least tweak the songs. Yeah. Either you know play it at a higher melody or what's it like? Um, we need more. You know, need another version of it though too. Like an like, acoustic version of some of these songs and stuff. Yeah. I want another Jack Black playing an animated animal movie. Whether or not that's a Kung Fu Panda movie or not, it's it's. it's I just want more What's Jack in, Black animated. Yeah, he's, I, in, it's he's in one a of while. the he's one of the best like at his craft. Yeah, I feel all three like. Kung Fu Panda movies were a banger. That one. Kung Fu Panda is really, Kung Fu Panda and How to Train Your Dragon is when like DreamWorks actually like took itself out of that. Oh, we make the weird animated movies. We make the antithesis to Pixar. Mm-hmm. You want family friendly? We're kid friendly, but we're also not. We're super edgy. Well, Kung Fu Panda and How to Train Your Dragon are just legitimate movies. They're stories. They're yeah. not gimmicks. And I think it's really cool. Kung Fu Panda 2 especially. Yes. Fucking banger, dude. That that one is so good. Shen is one of my favorite villains of all time. Yeah. Like, they did and such a fair, good job with Kung that. Kung Fu Panda is a great TV show as well. Yeah. Like, they, Kung Fu Panda does not miss throughout the entirety of it. Throughout the entirety of its list, like like its discography, it's great. It even had a great online game for a while, like a but great video game for DreamWorks the DreamWorks in general has been, with the exception of like, I'm trying to think of Trolls, Trolls and the Boss Baby have been How there. How dare you? Boss Baby was fucking <laughs> no, amazing. Boss Baby, Boss Baby too no. sucks. Boss Baby's an abomination. Boss Baby is a boss he's cancer. A, but he's a, he's a little dude, you know? He's like a little <laughs> he's a guy. guy. He's, he's, a, suit. he's a little guy. He's like, he's, a, he's got an agenda. <laughs> I'll never forget that video. Man. That Hopefully video it's not of, right or left leaning. That just video of Tobey Maguire. Just a little man. He's got a little agenda. Um, Tobey Maguire for Boss Baby 3. I feel like, with the exception of Boss Baby and Trolls, DreamWorks has been actually consistent in quality, which is amazing because of how much, like, how like, neglected they've been. They just dropped a new movie called The Bad Guys, which... It's going to be... I think it's going to be good. That's a, it looks good. The one thing I have to say is that it looked pretty, like, the story looks pretty mid, and I've been hearing some, like, mid things about it. It's the nut but, job again. Yeah. Uh, I want to no, say that. No, because the nut job is, like, a crack house movie. It's, like, Barnyard or, you know, uh, like, fair. I, but I mean, like, the plot. It's, like, yeah. it's, like, oh, I, I, you know, I do this, the plot's so I really do this. weird, like, it's just but five I, animals From stuff. the plot, from the plot, like, the, the trailer I saw, I yeah. think it, I think it'll actually be a good movie plot wise. I'm, I'm interested to see it because, like, you know, I'm always down for DreamWorks, and one thing that I've heard is that, like, while the story isn't amazing, visually, DreamWorks is actually, like, doing some really cool stuff. Like, their animation style is beautiful right now. Between that and the Puss in Boots sequel coming out, oh. their stuff looks gorgeous. Why is Puss in Boots getting a sequel? How did Puss in I don't Boots know. 2 beat Trek 5? Trek 5 has been I don't know. forever. Like, and I thought it was a straight-to-DVD thing, but, like, if you look at the animation, like, they're actually putting, like, a lot of work Doesn't into this. does Puss in Boots belong to Netflix? Uh, he got a TV no, show. He got a TV show on Netflix because DreamWorks had a deal with him. Him and King Julian got a TV show at the exact same time. DreamWorks has actually been hitting it out of the park with TV, too, because they also have the Jurassic Park show, Camp Cretaceous. 
So it's like the Jurassic Park for, yeah. for kids. They have uh, the Fast and Furious Spy Racers. So it's like again, Why Fast have and I never Furious. Heard of these? What is? Them? They I, just I, dropped this shit on Netflix. <laughs> they did Carmen San Diego. Oh, it's Netflix. Yeah, yeah they have like, deals with Netflix. Wait, they're the ones doing those yes. ones. Yeah. Oh, but do they also do Miraculous Ladybug too? No. Uh, but that like, here's the thing that here's the thing now though too. All those projects, whatever future stuff they had going on. Now delayed because Netflix is starting to be a bunch of fucking cucks and ne- shit. I yeah. love how I love how like what, didn't we call this shit like six six months ago? We were, like, I want to say I we mean, did. Netflix just started just when the, you know, it was like, it first started when they first announced they were going to increase their yeah. um, subscription. Yeah. Netflix has been going downhill. I was talking to someone at the Canab Film Fest and it was it was a wonderful night. We were getting just absolutely fucking plastered and. We decided to talk about streaming and the state of streaming right now, particularly Netflix. Mm -hmm. And this one girl and I were just, like, going at it because we were talking about, like, how fucking shitty Netflix is. Because the only thing that Netflix does, they drop one or two original series that are worth watching a year. And then they drop all their, like, Oscar movies in holiday season. That's all they have. You know, remember the days when, like, you could order a disc off Netflix? You could find any movie you wanted on Netflix. Even on their streaming, if you wanted to watch a movie, you could search it. They probably had it. Now, they don't because HBO Max exists and they bought up all the all those properties. Uh, Amazon exists and they have uh, MGM and other properties. Paramount Plus, they have all the Paramount movies now. Tubi has Universal movies. So Netflix just has this weird like assortment of like old, sometimes new movies. They're not getting new movies anymore unless yeah. they're Netflix originals. And they're also spending... I think it was, what, like almost 15, no, almost $7.5 million an episode on the new Stranger yeah. Things seasons. And that's like per, that's like minimum. And I'm like, you guys are the ones fucking yourselves in the ass. Because then they also go to film festivals and then they buy like Oscar worthy films for five, six hundred million dollars. Okay. They bought The Power of the Dog for like $350 million. And pushed a campaign out that cost them fifteen million, and it only won one Oscar. <laughs> and it's like, people were like raving about the movie, but then after like after their first watch, people were like, "This movie is like okay, like it's not great." They're just wasting money at this point, and they're not making it back. And yeah, I'm sorry, people share passwords. You just need to find another way around it. Hulu mm-hmm. finds a way around it. Spotify finds a way around it. Literally ads. Ad, yeah. Ads or just other ways of increasing revenue. Like, there are other ways to make your money back. Right. But I'm sorry, Netflix, you're spending way too much. Paramount, they know exactly what they're doing. They have, like, two or three originals right now. One of them is, like, super low budget, and then they have Halo. Oh, Halo's Paramount th- was so smart. They have, yeah. like, six TV shows they're waiting to release right now. And from, like, the old Nickelodeon. in your yeah. bundle that you pay for, you get live TV. Really? You get live sports with Paramount+. Plus. Oh, see, that changes everything. One flat fee. I think what also, like, shot... Uh, Netflix in the foot is that like out of all the places to cut their funding to directly it was towards their animation studios the one thing yeah, that wh- like why what is with Hollywood and suddenly fucking all dogging on animation all I don't sudden, think which it's is their that... it's like animation arguably is the I, I would I would say personally I believe is the best no, it, genre of creation because it is the most creative all, medium yeah, yeah all of Netflix's animation and stuff like Castlevania is one of their biggest fucking yeah. mainstays. There's there's supposed to be a uh, season four or a season five and shit. Um, I don't. It's fucking I could canceled. not see a Netflix that survived with, without Arcane. Like like they, exactly. that, they, they, that was the one thing that kept me going. Like okay, yeah, I could see why I would still use yeah. Netflix. Like, and but like and it, even like talking about like they just buy up um like the rights to fucking um movies and stuff like that. Like some of their stuff. Yeah, they have the next like, two Knives Out movies. Are you joking? Yeah, they remember yeah. when they, they bought the next two Knives Out movies, and the, I remember that was such a weird thing to think about, and it's like, it's just because they, they knew, it was like, oh, Knives Out was big, let's grab both of the sequels Although without any... I will say, if if Netflix has one thing and stuff that's, like, beating it, it, like, that helps it with them, I think it's their international movie sections, yeah. particularly their, their Korean... Their foreign films are all really the good. The Korean section is one of, like, I haven't, I haven't seen in any yeah. other, like, They form, have a good like, foreign media. section. Yeah, I feel like their Netflix, like especially when it and comes their documentaries to are pretty good too. shooting animation in the foot, someone. Oh they were, yeah, they're true. Documentaries crime ones, are good. Yeah, yeah, like I think they're. But, they're, they're, uh, but honestly, like Nat Geo, Nat Geo is kind of 
one upping Netflix with their docs and but not Geo belongs and Geo to and Disney. It's Disney and uh, Discovery Plus has their own channel and their stuff is actually like really good and people are like by eating that shit up. But when it, at the at the Oscars they were presenting the award for best animated film and they said, oh, animated films are made to entertain children and to be tolerated by adults. And I'm like, what? Yeah, like, like who the fuck so are you? Shut the fuck bullshit, up, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you're giving Encanto the award, yeah, that's what it's for. Yeah. But like, there was literally a film nominated that was an animated documentary about Pakistani refugees who were literally like surviving day in day out with no food or shelter. And yeah. it's like that would that, that's not a movie made for kids to be tolerated right. by adults. Like, I'm sorry, you're so shallow. You need to see somebody who has like who looks like you on screen. Yeah, in order yeah. to in order to feel like you can connect to the movie. Yeah. If you can't connect to some drawn character, that's on you for not having an imagination, I suppose. Yeah. Because animation it it's like you just, you don't like fun then is what it is. It's simply it's not that you tolerate it. It's like if if the jokes are bad, yes, then it's tolerated. But no movie that is so bad that the jokes are tolerable, quote unquote, are going to make it to the Oscars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Well, I think HBO, HBO Max especially, well, they started out gangbusters. They kind of went down by the time, I would say by summer, because during summer, people were going to the movies again. So by the time Dune came out, people were like, well, I'm going to go see it in the theater as opposed to on HBO Max. That's why it's so low numbers. But like Mortal Kombat is still the, the highest day one streamed film on HBO Max, surprisingly. I, yeah, I don't know I, why. I did, I did a group watch party that <laughs> yeah. day on, on HBO Max. I, did, was, I do think I know a little bit why. Because it was during COVID, yeah. and everyone wanted to beat the shit out of each other. <laughs> and everyone's like, I'm not going to beat the shit out of my wife because I love her. I'm going to let these two motherfuckers do it in front of me, and I'm going to like it. Yeah. It, it, um, but yeah, I don't know if that movie's the best movie for not for wanting to release your anger. It's more of because the the main character gets his ass whooped the whole movie. That's his entire. <laughs> besides superpower. that, mo the, besides the creative character <laughs> that was actually has the, plot. Or he more. has weaponized. He has weaponized ass kicking. <laughs> It's got, you know what I'm going to do he's about got, this fight? Got, Get my ass kicked. He's got every nerd's like every nerd's daydreamed ability. Oh, I wish I could just break out of them wailing on me right now. You know what's like <laughs> worse about that though too? This dude's like a, like a fighter and shit. As a fighter, you're supposed to evolve. You're sp you're telling me that this dude's only good in the first two minutes of the first round? <laughs> he's a fighter who who gets progressively worse throughout <laughs> the entire fight. That's, I, like, that's what's funny. I would love, like, if they put him in a Mortal Kombat game and he's just, like, the worst fucking like, character. Like, why he's, yeah. shit, he's <laughs> just horrible. <laughs> set wise he has to be because yeah. his whole thing is that he has to take so much damage yeah. first. He build up his x-ray by getting your ass kicked He's Mortal the Kombat's time. first heal. Like, yeah. He's <laughs> I love how, like, that, so like I love that heal. movie because, I, I don't know, it just has, has a soft spot in my heart because it's, it's a terrible it's movie. Good, but, but it's, it's just bad. it's cheesy it's but i think it, they it got hits. everyone's origin stories at least a good amount yeah, though like, too like especially it, at the big Jax hitters is like the best example Jax for is what so the good in the like. movie I, dude his scene with a uh, scorpion or for sub-zero freezing his yeah. arms off and shit when like, he when he first almost dies i genuinely thought he was just dead yeah like that that was such a that was that looked like a fatality to me dude <laughs> i was really happy with how they and also i felt like the gore was like not it wasn't like oh we're just gonna do it an r-rated mortal Kombat movie for the sake of showing you blood and guts like they did a really good job of like making it like oh this is cringe inducing but also like it feels like mortal Kombat. and i think it's just it's just a fun movie like there's nothing I've... wrong with having fun at that movie i think we were discussed about this but it was really cool or it's really interesting to see that they switched up between Liu king and kung lao being like you know because yeah. in the lore <laughs> Liu king is like the big like top dogs descendant of like you know all of the yeah. uh earth realm champions and is this and this one it's to do with the hat this time yeah. it's kung i think lao. we're watching I, uh, we're, I think it's like what set up for an arc right because yeah. they're gonna yeah well and kung lao is coming back like he's not he's not dead dead like, noob cybot is pretty much confer all yeah, but noob, confirmed noob is ermac in the sequel I don't know if Ermac oh, is. I, I know they're focusing everything on Johnny Cage. So like, and they haven't even announced a casting. Like it's already been in production for like two two almost a month. Get and Barry Moynihan to do it. I would <laughs> really enjoy that. Like Barry honestly, Moynihan as a as in Mortal Kombat? That would be really fun. As Johnny Cage? I can see it. I can the see Miz. it. I feel like Barry Moynihan the he's Miz the from WWE. 
The Miz would be good, but I just I, 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 just, I feel like he could he could have the chops he, too. He's too much. He's too much of a of a, of a smug bastard. But that's literally <laughs> yeah. But Johnny Cage like he has something likable about him. When you look at Miz, he's the epitome of like everything that you hate inside of a white dude. Davidson is Johnny Cage. Yes, there it is. I hate you so. <laughs> Well, let's, get, let's get the rock and no Johnny one else Cage. exudes raw sexuality the way <laughs> <laughs> cover up the tattoos and build, dude, what if he just like gets cast at it and just bulks up like a motherfucker That's, i loved him in suicide squad he was, he was so hey great guys in that, <laughs> yeah. that shit was i remember like they were hyping him up too like yeah. they're like pete davidson well, i was suicide. so happy i was like dude, was, i'm so happy for him this is a big deal i remember because like i didn't see i didn't um i watched the first suicide squad and i was like what the fuck and then i saw that i was like why the fuck is pete davidson yeah. in here i definitely didn't think they're going to go the route that they did funnily enough yeah. i knew they were going to kill a bunch at the beginning yeah. i did not think he was going to die I thought he was going to continue for a, at least a little bit. Like, I thought he was going to make it at least into the second yeah. act. To yeah. be the first one dead was a bit much. I really I really enjoyed that movie. That that was really well done. I feel like, and that's the thing, like, we talked about last time, like, we've been talking about, like, you know, the state of movies and everything, and I feel like, overall, blockbuster movies, there's those real gems that come along, and yet they get overshadowed by, like, the way bigger movies. Like, in my opinion, I feel like The Suicide Squad was probably the best comic book movie last year. And not many people are talking about it anymore because of Spider Man, mm -hmm. and because of you know because of the controversy with Eternals and you know like and how like mid it is or how some people think it's a masterpiece. I loved it. I thought it was it was we good. Just, I think we just move so fast. We we don't appreciate that. We we think that like once something's so like something's past a certain yeah. age, we just don't. We're not interested in it. Anymore. Well, that's why I hope the Batman has like a place like, now, like melee players. <laughs> You got something to say to some melee players, bro? <laughs> <laughs> you, was, you keep bringing them up, bro. <laughs> I was I was watching a Smash tournament the other day, so that was... <laughs> Only Neckbeard. What's like, what I was going to say? I feel like Neckbeard's, like, play, like, fucking melee rather than, like... I don't know. I never... I skipped it. Like, it was the Smash Brothers I skipped, so I, I've always had a passion, passionate I, disliking I mean, for what it. Do, what even <laughs> is that shit? It's the second Smash Brothers game. Yeah, so it oh, came Smash out on GameCube melee. before Brawl, but because, I think uh, Brawl is better than Melee in, like, every way. I Just, believe that, too. I like, I like Brawl. Brawl is the baseline for the Smash we have right now, yeah. so... Melee is a fucking decade or two two decade old game that people are still playing, and I'm like, oh. It was good. a tw it was a tweet. That's why I keep the th making the joke because it was a tweet. It was like melee players I'm really no good longer at... interested in the game after finding out it's over eighteen or I'm something like that. Let's go. I'm really good at a game that was popular eighteen years ago. Right. Good for you. I'm, I'm good at a game that has updated mechanics and since rebalanced the, the characters to make it so that, you know, people play more than just the top three. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Oh, I meant to ask, did you ever end up watching any anime by the, after the anime no. episode we did? <laughs> no. Unless you consider, I don't know, I guess Arcane is not an anime, so. No, it's not. Because anime is basically just all the style, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, kind of. Uh, j okay. j if it's made in Japan, essentially, or Avatar is an exception. <laughs> um, I feel like Avatar gets through just because of the anime influence style that it had. And I was just gonna ask you, like, when at the Oscars will we ever see like an anime receive like an award like that? Because um, like, I feel like there's so many series that have like come by that, like, at this point, like, it's it'd be kind of weird to not see like an Oscar nomination for a Demon Slayer. You'd have to like, get, visual art. yeah, I mean, like, you'd yeah. have to have it obviously, it'd have to be like a movie. Does it have um, to be a movie? Yeah, oh, okay, Oscars yeah. have to Oscars be movies. Movie. If you want TV, it would be either the Emmys or Golden, or <gasps> oh, Golden Globes. So that's what the, okay, anime that's... film, they're act, I mean, there have been anime that have been nominated for. Oscars like for best Ghibli animated film gotten... Ghibli films um but like something a step from that something mm -hmm. that's more like the regular anime that you see on a daily basis it's a, it, Ghibli the, is a, a, on its own genre for a reason the thing is is that anime is such a I mean just like look at me anime is such a hard sell as it is <laughs> look, at, look me. at me anime <laughs> is such a hard sell and the majority of voters for the academy come on door are... swords and boobs bro <laughs> what do you want <laughs> it it really and also anime films rely heavily on the shows and so the voters aren't going to watch the shows the people who vote for like the oscars I'll like the nominations they they're very they're simpletons they're very simple people <laughs> that's that's why films like ink that's why three disney movies get nominated every year yeah oh toy story was on in the living room the other day and i realized that i was i, was, I realized i really like cars like i i, I like the movie like i was really getting into into cars and i realized the dead gas station dynaco is the same as in cars 
It's like I love I love those little things, man. I love going back and watching. Uh, uh, I think oh. it has something to do with like the racing wheel I got and all the interest in like the racing I've been doing. It's been fun. I like it. It's been real interesting. My favorite thing about racing is that in Furious Seven, at the beginning of the movie, they're at a, a street race competition called Race Wars. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just it's just there imagine trying to sell that as like someone on social media like hey guys come to my race war <laughs> <laughs> to wrap up is let's go around and talk about our favorite episode or our favorite thing that we've talked about on this show <sighs> favorite thing that we've talked about that's difficult because I've, I've gone through these episodes so many times <laughs> like I, I've seen I've listened to every episode at least Five times now because I want to say two or three you know, for each one though too because sometimes like I'll, I'll like go back to hear an old one and I'm like oh I like listening to us mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that one when we were talking about like our favorite it was like it's just like talking about our favorite games like we all oh, had a first, first. first yeah, that, that one was great one. that yeah. one was so much fun it was it was it was definitely something beautiful I it was I would love to do more stuff like that one where it was like because we could have done another one when Elden Ring came out or something because so many big games came I out. I was gonna so say like maybe we have an update list for our favorite games of like you know currently oh, though God. too because <laughs> I mean I, yeah I've been playing a shit ton though too I just barely started Vampire and Diablo mm -hmm. 2 actually Diablo That's 2 has been fucking Diablo 2 is good I'm playing ladder I'm, I'm, you know I'm about halfway through Elden Ring and I'm Starting, I'm like, uh, I'm in the middle, uh, middle of Borderlands Three right now as well. But yeah, I think my new favorite game is like definitely Red Dead Two. Yeah, I'm playing Red Dead Two as well. Just got to the second camp, yeah. so I've been enjoying. It. Yeah, dog. I'm back on my Tomb Raider shit. Yeah, uh, yeah. I just I can't I can't get out of it, man. The so sixty versions or the no, no PC, PC the oh, okay, the you. remasters. Also emulators, I just barely found out that my computer can run run an emulator though. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. NBA Street has been my Woo! shit. <laughs> um, you guys should you guys should try uh, think about putting aside some money for a Quest Two when you get the chance because I, I I could I, I'm just saying like it, you'd be surprised how big of a addition how, how big of an upgrade it is to your repertoire, especially if you already own a PC. Like, I'm gonna have to go get some other stuff for my because I want to upgrade my PC though mm -hmm. too. Over box. summer, I'm going to be doing a couple upgrades, get a new graphics card and a new case for mine. So. Nice. Yeah. nice. The big part about moving I'm worried about is just getting my whole new setup set up. Because it's, it's never about yeah. like being comfortable where I'm sitting. It's about being comfortable where the camera's located, the lighting, yeah. all that, you my to think backdrop. About, you have to think about more stuff. Fit than... my green screen in there. It's going to be terrifying. And every time I move, something always breaks. And so I'm paranoid now. I'm paranoid now that my PC is going to break and I'm not going to be able to make anything. And I'm ta like, it's, I'm, I'm ha like, it's, it Bubble makes rap, me so bro. anxious. Bubble rap. I know. Like, I, I do whatever. Not even that, though. It's like, it's just like I'll unplug it and then a software thing will break or some shit. Oh yeah, yeah. Like it's like yeah. bad luck no type ends. shit. Like have terrible, no for terrible that. bad luck type stuff. I know when I get back over summer, I'm really gonna be focused on um, fitness. Yeah, I'm gonna fitness get swole. Dick in your uh. mouth. <laughs> See, nice job, Willis. I'm thinking Thank most you. likely. I don't know. Maybe we'll come back quarterly or something for. Just see if we can hop out. Like, see, just I don't know. I'll text the group chat. See whenever we're. I was gonna say like we can just like we can do these like over fucking like online. And yeah. stuff Even if we too. if we did it through Discord, we could. It's just. You know, get like it's, it's this that's getting like, rid of the video yeah. studio is kind of something that's. Yeah. I'll buy a camera just for that, just for <laughs> that. Wherever, wherever I'm at. Yeah, get a Ra Razer Kayo is a good, uh, good webcam. That's what mm -hmm. I have. I yeah. Or, I'm yeah. gonna stream more over summer too. I'm gonna stream. Hell yeah. More like story content. Maybe I mean hell if I need. Uh, I mean, I'll fucking stream Fortnite. I don't care. That's, I just want to stream yeah. something. Like I want to get. Uh, I know. I know certain games. I know. Like Minecraft, Fortnite, and like Among Us and Phasmophobia are good games to stream to get consistent viewers. So like if I wanted to like up, you know, get my perks and everything, I would probably stream those games. Because I know no one's going to want to watch me that. play Tomb Raider. I could see that. On the flip side, well, I feel like on the flip side, though, you grab that niche audience quicker if you st mm -hmm. stream the smaller games. Because I, I, I remember true. before I got banned, IP banned from the game, I was streaming Wizard 101, and I gained, like, a large viewing Wizard that. 101. And before, I don't know what the fuck happened. I bought membership and got IP banned, but... Hell yeah. Uh, biggest shame ever, but, um... No, it's... I can't wait. I look forward to that. Obviously, like, and I'm really upset that we never got to make, like, the DSU Esports put us on, like, a stream team for mm -hmm. Twitch or something like that, so I can fucking be... A, like, so I can, commu like, keep the community tab open yeah. for all of us. Because, like, Isaac streams all the time, and I never... Like, I, I try to watch everybody I see, like, Isaac 
like uh, Brooks. Like I try to watch everybody on, from the old teams, like content and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like there's plenty of people out there doing their thing and they're doing great. Obviously, Uchers coming up, and I'm about to submit my video, so I'm actually about to film the overarching little backdrop thing right now after this, nice. so I can edit it together and upload it. I'm really hoping that like if if things go well with Uchers show, it'll be good. Yes, yeah. I, I don't know. I would love to be a part of that competition. Then if not, I'm still just gonna keep uploading. But like the, when I get when I move, I'm just gonna try to focus on what I'm not. I'm obviously gonna be working a full time sh job now. Yeah. So going from 28 yeah. to 40 hours is gonna be a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. But I'm still gonna try to make content in my free time. So yep. I wanna good. I wanna keep pushing this because this is this is the end game for me. <laughs> right. So, and yeah. things have been looking pretty good recently. Like. Uh, I, I will say since I've done the podcast, especially like things have changed for me like crazy. I've gone up 50 subscribers since I moved here. Like it's, it's something, it is something else entirely. Yeah. And I think that this is one of the greatest parts, the greatest experiences being here and being with the team with you guys was so great. I loved yeah. every bit of it. Yeah. Like it's talking a good, shit. good time. <laughs> Um, I guess without further ado, <laughs> as much as I don't want to, it's, I guess it's time to do our plugs and we'll say our goodbyes here. Um, who wants to go first? I'll go first. You know my plugs. They're down in the bottom. You know me. Yep. It's been it's been real. Your Twitch is uh what? Car just Carlos it's Plum. G zero zero B. It's Gubernator, but with two zeros. Gotcha. So I'll, I, yeah, I'll throw that link in the description now. It should be in there. I don't know if I have put that in there yet. What about you, TJ? Uh, TJ fucking shit. Shady, right? Yeah. Honestly. What's yeah? Because I changed it. Because why the fuck not? Um. Yeah. Follow me. Uh. I'm just not really like. I follow gaming news pretty closely and shit though too. But like, if anything, I'm posting like MMA shit though too. Uh -huh. So if you want to see me fucking just hear my hot takes and shit, follow <laughs> me there. You bunch of nerds, mm -hmm. take care. Yep. And of course, you can find all my links. And you'll be continuing to follow me here on the video channel here at Victor TGH. And of course, all of you who have been watching us here on the podcast on any audio platforms, we thank you so much for tuning in and listening. And we appreciate you so, so much. Every single one of you from every single area of the world that you were in. Without further ado, we've been the Morning Madness Podcast. We thank you guys so much for waking up with us this year. And we will see you guys again, well, one day. One day. Peace. Bye, nerds. <laughs>